Good evening. Welcome to the planning board meeting for April 22nd. Did I get that right? 22nd? Yes. Thank goodness. Okay. So the first item on our agenda is talking about um, structuring or holding a special meeting to discuss uh, this growth issue in general and a multi-stakeholder event to address it. Should we first start with the proposals that um, folks are hoping to put forward changes? Sure. So you all three need to sidle up to the table out there. Okay. on your screen now though. Do you want another chair? Awesome. And then just so you know, we have a continuance on at 7.30 that will take a minute to vote, but we have until 7.35 essentially to get this started. Okay, um, do you want to introduce? Where did we yeah. I'm feeling a little discombobulated tonight, but. That's fine. But um, I will, so just to begin with, we had originally proposed two citizens' petitions, a three year and a one year. Yep. And we've decided to remove the three year from the warrant after we feedback from town council. It seemed like it wouldn't do what we had hoped. Okay, can I just ask process wise, is it going to be removed or are you going to move no action? I believe it's been removed, right? I think it still appears on the warrant because it was a citizen's petition and. Oh, even though we notified you in advance? Okay. As far as I know, it's still there. Okay. Yeah, so we just need to know what, you, you just need to know what you have to do to speak to that. And I presume it's moved no action? It wouldn't be a motion to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it doesn't so mean that somebody won't oppose that motion, right? But okay. Okay. Um, and I and I just just to speak to that for a minute in the article um, 36 that we have here is some there's something going on with the wording of the way it was originally that made it a little bit hard for me to follow. So it's missing uh, the com three year component completely unless I'm not reading. I just skimmed it quickly because we just received it, but. Um, it's, it's missing that identifier um, so that in the final warrant, it would be, if it's not too late, it would be great to have it um, notified as, a, as the three year, like up by the Article 36 Subdivision Garden Parks Village Apartments, so that other people can understand what we're striking when we strike it. So it, it, your question is to the draft of your article 37. Uh, no, is that right? Uh, I'm That's sorry. The yeah. article number is, the town meeting article number is 40. Okay. Uh, it's very confusing because the article in the bylaw would be yep. Yep. Right. 36, right? Yeah, okay. So there's only one article, so there's only one article 40? So, because it doesn't, when you go on to here, there's no, there's no article that would state it would be 41 or. Um, yeah, the length, how does that work? Yeah. The last page doesn't have an article number at the top. It doesn't have For annual article town 41. meeting. It's at the bottom of the page before I it. Oh, it's not on ours. Oh, it's not on ours. Yeah. Just cut off. Okay. So, what All right, it so, is, so it would be 41 technically? It is 41. Oh, it's 41. 41. Okay. So the one that you are still hoping to speak to is going to be, is Article 41 on the warrant? Yes. Mm -hmm. Just for the public. Okay. And, we and Article 40 on the warrant is the one that you are hoping to move no action. Right. Okay. That's for no action. Yeah. No action. Or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So does this one have the, our suggested changes yet? No. Um, Uh, I don't think it does. Did it go to the link? Yeah, it did. Yeah. Is this the um, the one with suggested changes in it after we revised this based on the Whatever town council had last. 
Okay. okay so. um, no, because I sent it to him. I don't think it's been updated. So. Yeah, I don't. So, I don't. so we don't have in front of us what you're hoping to change. So why don't you just we summarize? Do, yeah, do the layman's thing, and we'll look at the okay, so the, the actual la language. Right. The town council's feedback um, was that there was not enough detail on a specific planning method. Yep. Um, so we had added in a paragraph on that. It says to accomplish this, the town shall establish a growth study committee, as had previously been done in 1995 during another period of rapid growth comprised of community members and town officials appointed jointly with the planning board by the planning board and board of selectmen no later than August 1st, 2019. The purpose of the committee shall be to objectively research the impact of growth and identify a proactive approach to managing growth. The committee, which will gather feedback from the community in a variety of ways, or including but not limiting to conducting surveys, holding forums, researching how other towns have managed rapid growth. The committee will analyze recent large developments and provide an analysis of, what's, of whether, all, whether there was an overall net positive financial impact. The committee will create a development schedule that will relate to the timing of residential development to the town's ability to provide services. The one year slowing of new building impairments proposed in this article will allow for effective review of municipal service impacts by development type. Sorry, Amy, just to Sorry. confirm, what you're reading to us, we don't have a copy Yes, of. unfortunately not. Uh, Okay. It, is it related to an, art <coughs> an article? It is, is it? related to this draft. Uh, so that, the last is page in front of the handouts, it's, re it's the revised version of that. Okay. Um, and so we, you, we'll, we'll send it out shortly. It, so the language for the warrant has to be finalized tomorrow. And Elaine and council has re have received it. It was, in a, it was in a separate email. Um, on Friday and um, town council got back to us he was under the weather and he had gotten back to us as far as the response to it and he said that he felt with possibly trimming up a little bit of the wording but it wasn't absolutely necessary that it would it was very likely that the Attorney General would pass it so let me just get this straight. We sent town council the new language this past Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was okay, great. So you're not even you're not even making the deadline for this, meeting, <coughs> right? So for our meeting. No. I I have Ray's response, but there's no attachment, so I don't have the article. You said that to me. Oh, okay. 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 All right. Can you tell me one more time what you propose uh, the growth study committee to be comprised of? Um, so appointed by selectmen and planning board, and we left it vague in community members and elected officials. So the, the growth study committee would be appointed by the planning board and the selectmen. Jointly. Jointly. No later than August 1st by community members and town officials. Community members, town officials. Go ahead, Gary. So just a clarifying question. Do we need to go to town meeting to establish a committee to establish to evaluate growth? Mm, it feels like no. there's kind of two different things here. One of no. them is a, no. is a restriction on building and the other one is forming a committee. And, and it, I guess what I don't understand is why are we, like we should be forming the committee anyways, because yeah. what happens if this doesn't pass a town meeting? Now does that mean we can't, we shouldn't form the committee to evaluate it either? No, we, like were, asked, we were asked to um, derive um, some perimeters to what, what, our, what we wanted to accomplish in this, during this one year and so what we put our heads together was what, what we would define during this period. Um, so if this did go through in, in um, the town meeting, we would then both put our heads together, both with the selectmen and the planning board, and put together a committee. So you yeah, can't so have a temporary moratorium without a specific planning purpose. So this was to define the specific planning purpose okay. that would allow us to have And a that specific year. planning purpose needs to be actually in the, the warrant article itself? Correct. Right. Uh, that's our understanding. Order that was our understanding. Pass and muster for the attorney general for the moratorium. Right. As okay. does just as important is defining the period of time and, and the parameters of it. All right. Did you did you tell me all all the pieces? It's very hard to. So, Amy, I know you read it and you read it really quickly. I know. I'm sorry. Right? So, can you tell me the big pieces that you've put in for your planning process? There's the growth study. A committee would be appointed by August first. Yeah. And the committee committee's purpose would be to objectively research the impact of growth and identify a proactive approach to managing growth. Okay. 
and the committee would um, think they would have to present their research. Let's see. Um, I'd say the following town meeting, following annual town meeting, I believe. That would be town meeting 2020. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Was there any discussion as to the size of the committee, or is that purposely left vague? Purposely left vague. So I guess you may ask a question. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I'm along with Gary. I, uh, maybe a little different, but I'm not sure why a committee would be in the Zodan article. Yeah, so it's feedback from the town council to their proposed citizens' petition article. So this is a, this, just for the public edification and, and to remind people, this is outside of the typical process. So this isn't the planning board's article, um, but, but it certainly is the planning board's issue. Sure, right? sure. Um, and so the feedback from town council was that, that um, absent some mechanism for study or planning purpose, that the citizens' petition might not pass muster with the attorney general. So can I, can I just add to that, or, or paraphrase in a different way? This is my yeah. understanding: yep. is that we have to have a reason to impose this moratorium, and in this situation, the reason to impose the moratorium is to study and evaluate growth and come up with a strategy by which to deal with it. And yep. without having that, <coughs> without having that that reason, then. It could be conceived as an over restrictive policy, and 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 so that's why it, it's important to link the two. That's kind of what I'm Correct. hearing but from everyone saying. Nothing keeps us from taking the initiative to establish the the drive for the committee to do this growth study thing. Right. That's there are. You could, two you could do it without a time. Right. Of course. <clears throat> My concern <laughs> is usually when we put zoning articles in, it's definitive and it's there to last. This one we're going to have to go in and update down the road. This is just a it one would year thing. It's it a would one expire. Year it expires all by itself. No, but it's still an article that we're adding to the zoning. It is. It is. So no, your point. I understand your point. Um, so it's only valid for a year. So then, does it like after that year? Does it just automatically, like in the next revision of the zoning, it just disappears, or do we have to take any action? Or it remains there. It's just not effective anymore. And at some future town meeting, we can go and have it removed. We have to vote to. So we have to vote to remove the expired. Zoning article. We've had other articles We've like this before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The marijuana one was like I don't know if we voted to take it off, but the marijuana it was a temporary. Well, it was a temporary moratorium. Good point. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, do you want to just um, big picture tell us what you hope to achieve with this at town meeting for the folks at home? That we re want really specifically. Okay. We were hoping to ha allow citizens to have a chance to weigh in on this topic that is a hot topic on everyone's mind and they they wish they could have a, a forum to speak about it rather than just coming when each individual project comes before the planning board uh, rather that we're looking at it more holistically and they could speak about it yeah and that would and be accomplished with your growth study commission as well so yes. we could accomplish that and I would argue that we need to accomplish that outside of a zoning article honestly I'm still still there we are um, we are arguably rushing the deadlines and actually not meet, meeting the deadlines. Um. So, 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 I mean, I guess I agree with you, Muriel. Uh, I think we need to recommend forming this committee, and I'm, I'm wondering if even we can recommend that we form a committee in, in, you know, yeah. with the selectmen. And at least if we already start that process, then to me that might help um, to some degree at town meeting even to, to show that we've already started this process. We're not gonna have it formed and we're not gonna have all the details worked out by them, but at least if we even start it, then at least that shows the community that we've already, we've already started this, this, this process of evaluating it and figuring out how to rein it in. That, that's, yeah. that's my I, I a thousand percent support the idea of a collective, all stakeholder in, and I'm sorry yeah. I interrupted, no, go wait. ahead. No, you, you, I think you're, we're well, we can, the same to thing. To Gary's point, we I, can make a motion for that tonight and include these guys on this side of the bench, right? We can talk about that absolutely includes the, yes, yes. So we're, we're, we have already voted not to support the citizens article. Were you hoping that we would reconsider that, the citizens petition article necessarily? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. All right. So um, that new language 
if it stays on the warrant and you want it on the warrant, has to get to town hall by tomorrow morning. I just sent it to town council now. So. Okay. She said it to right, because the, the warrant is finalized tomorrow. Um, Things can be amended on the floor of town meeting, though. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Things can be amended on town meeting floor, and, and it would be worth it would probably be worth having a handout to, to for everybody to know how to do that um, this year because um, this isn't the only only article that people are, are interested in and it's just a piece of information for the public that makes it quicker. Um, okay. So if we're not going to reconsider the article, do you want to like jump back on the board and talk about the, the committee formation, the idea more completely? Because that, that feels more comfortable for me. Sorry, I think us as a board is more comfortable. Yes, yeah. I concur. I don't, I don't care. <clears throat> You've been very quiet. That's my nature. <laughs> Thoughts? Yes. Okay. All right. Oh, sounds good. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, just while you guys are repositioning, I want to make sure that um, that the formation of this study committee, I think, very definitely has to have the school committee involved as well, um, and maybe other leadership groups. I, I have a list if that helps. I'm sorry. I have or, a list of members that could potentially be on it. Yes, yes, that wasn't what I was saying. I was saying to form 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 the group, right? I, I think the list will be very helpful. We all have lists, right, of who should be considered oh, to be part people, of the group. Oh, not people, but people Criteria. From, from right, right, group. stakeholder groups that should be included. Yes, yes. okay. Um, but for the deciding, appointing, evaluating, forming this study commission, um, it jumps into my head that certainly the school um, superintendent. Yes. And the police chief, and the fire chief, and the DPW um, should be um, in voice. that conversation as that is as being formulated. And ha right, have a have a voice or a vote. Yeah. yeah. May I ask a process question? You may. Or maybe that's not a process question, but I'm curious if we have the ability as a planning board to form this committee or if we need the selectmen to do it jointly and the only reason i'm asking is that from an efficiency perspective just even to do a joint meeting just right. adds another step no you're exactly right, right. And if this falls under the jurisdiction yeah. of the planning board yeah. then maybe we should just take initiative and i agree do it, do i agree it. i agree that's the other that's the other way and then to make sure we invite all the stakeholders that we um we envision um what do you guys think? So is that a question for Elaine? So you do have the ability to yeah. apply to that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I think that should be taken up. I, I definitely think that that is certainly um, an idea that is attractive to me as well. But not to exclude anybody, but to streamline the organization process is how I think about it. That makes sense. Yeah. Do we need to make a motion for that? So. Uh, I don't know that we need to make a, well, we can make a motion. Um, what are, we have, um, we have effectively 15 minutes right now. Shall we knock off the constituency groups that we would like to see part of this study committee? Would that be part of the motion? Yeah, I would, I mean, I think we're going to form an ad hoc group and not necessarily, um, it would be my suggestion to not necessarily mandate um, participation, but certainly invitation <coughs> to a constituency group. We can't make people participate. No, sure. I was just thinking that let's get our what we want to ask and make it a motion and we all vote on it. That's no, I think so. Yeah. So, um, how about we go around the ta table? Do you you have your list to start with of yeah, constituency groups? Yeah. Um, I have um, <coughs> a developer, a developer um, in town. Um, Someone who's um, involved with the economic development com committee from the chamber, um, three citizens at large, a member of open space, a member of the conservation committee, and then um, you mentioned a few others: the school committee, um, fire, police, um, DPW, um, and then um, somebody from um, historic D district, um, zoning board of appeals. Um, and other liaisons, I don't know. Planning. Yeah, and planning. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. So here's an interesting question I have. Um, I, I wrote down the Chamber of Commerce. Do you have others that jumped into your head? I would, I, personally, I would be more in favor of leaving it as a smaller yeah. group of yeah. town representatives right. and have the study opening involved. up a little bit more to just citizens at large yep. and limit the town participation to people that actually have a stake in it. The Conservation Commission, I think they have a stake in, in what happens in town, but I don't think they have a stake necessarily in planning things. They look at an individual development and, and protect their interests. So I'm not sure that they would really add a lot to the conversation, whereas the fire department can come in and say, you know, if we build 200 more homes, we're going to have a problem. And the police can tell you that, and DPW can tell you that. And I'm not sure that Conservation Commission or well, the Historic District Commission is necessarily going to add. Well, my concerns. Hold on, Deb. We're not, we're not discussing yet. We're getting feedback. Okay. I don't necessarily think those people would add to the conversation to making it a, a productive discussion. So let me, thank you. Let me just, um, let me just say that for a study committee, this, this is unwieldy, right? But if we have a study committee that, that we, uh, for me, like that's how I'd vote, right? This is unwieldy, this group. But if we have a smaller study committee that is, that is um, intentionally going to reach out to these other constituency groups, that makes way better sense to me. So just saying that out. So what I really want to know right now, if it's possible, is that what constituency groups do we want to make sure we capture? And then how do we want to define that? I would say town services. I agree. Anything related to town service, I think you need to include. OK. And if we want to be more specific, that would be Hold on one second. I'm, I'm just going to come around okay. the table, but yep. I definitely want to hear everybody. Dave. Yeah, agreed. Just, but like Gary, I'd like to know. So that includes DPW, fire, um, police, and DP, sorry, and uh, school. Yes, I have those on my those list. Those four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. Okay. The groups all sounded good to me. I was going to mention that the the group that was formed in 29 or 1995 had 14 members. In case for ref point of reference. So. Uh, I don't know how much I can. I, I was part of that, and it was a wonderful, rich experience on the on the on the on the citizens' involvement idea. So I'm not dismissing that as a as an as a <coughs> starting point. But I don't know that I care if they had 14 members particularly. What was their constituency group when they did it? Um, let me just. I don't know if it lists them out here. I can come. I can come back to me. I can okay. Back so I, I mean, I'm in general agreement there. I, I would like to expand it a little bit. Somebody from either the chamber or from yeah. an economic standpoint, yeah. just to make sure their their input is their yeah. voice is added. Yep. Okay, I found it. So, okay. So it was five members of the planning board, um, five community members at large, and four members of the development community. Four members. Not that we have to do it that way, but just right. for reference. So that's interesting, right? that um, it's very different than what we are talking about here. Mm -hmm. just, just interesting as a point of, um, and it, that culminated right in the um, Voices for Vision. Is that right? Is this, that the same This was time? earlier. Um, maybe the voice, I can't remember what year the Voices of Visions was. I thought that was later. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Maybe go back and research history care. Um, I agree on services. I also support keeping the group smaller rather than larger. Um, I think that as committees we do a really good job of collecting input and there's always an opportunity to ask other committees to um, engage when appropriate. But I think just from an efficiency perspective and a meeting perspective, I'm, I prefer to keep it generally smaller rather than larger. I feel that we need people on the committee who provide data. Um, so financial, school committee, um, the town services has been discussed, but I'm not sure what is appropriate from the financial side, whether it's committee members or town um, staff personnel or, um, well, in addition to community members, but, um, but I, I think that's just part of it. Big yeah. Part of it. yeah. Um, can I just ask this from a, just because we're sort of mushing this around. Um, is there any uh, any appetite for um, recommending 
some professional support in the in the planning field? Yeah, that for for one thing, um, I, I had asked Elaine recently, just in the context of uh, of zoning advisory committee, whether or not um, certain data was available, and and um, you know you'd you'd you know mentioned to me that in the past that had been done by <coughs> consultants. It's not the type of parsing of the financial information that we normally do, and so yes, so. But, uh, me, me as well. Could oh, okay. So Voices of Vision was 2003, so eight years after yeah, that. So, so and then I found another one on um, the presentation. Essentially was um, the members were made up with, of um, um, uh, employees from the town, um, co-chairs of the Appropriation Committee, School Committee. What's well, this? What's this? This was the... Um, FPWG report presentation, oh, yeah, the yeah, financial yeah, yeah, yeah. plan working yeah, group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was part of that. Too. That's the 2007 one. Yeah, that's the 2007 yeah. one. So what did? Oh, and that was about. That was a lot of people. Yeah. What was? And that was Phil Totino. Phil Totino kind of authored and and spearheaded that. Mm -hmm. So that would be an interesting person to ask about. Um, what did the 1995 study, growth study com committee? What What was the product? Um, other than the report, yeah. it was a report. Yeah, there was recommendations. Yeah, the re recommendations, uh, they were the ones that you sent me, Elaine. Mm -hmm. um, so what they were, we have selectively encouraged commercial industrial expansion, um, and apparently all of these things were accomplished. Address property tax lag for new development. Um, one was determined not to be legal. Um, two was done with new le legislation passed. The plan for capital improvements, um, number one, capital planning process was improved via new general bylaw, um, and it was eventually in the charter. Number two, there was a follow-up study where the consultant worked with the town to develop a way to identify and rank parcels of interest. Um, the me methodology is now a part of the open space and recreation plan, and, and a ranking system methodology is in there. Um, preserve land for open space, rural character. Um, number one has been a long time goal for planning board, but there's been thorny issues that have come up um, talking to landowners, um, so it hasn't advanced much. Number two, I believe <coughs> that this eventually led to a special legislation that was created, Open Space Preservation um, Commission. Is that how that, okay. Number three, not sure, but I think. The work was continued, and I'm just trying to summarize it. So I think um, so, so I there think were there were there were continuations to different things that got filtered out through. So through let me let me recommend that we um, we set aside time to talk, talk about this, uh, formulating the committee, stakeholders, um, and we get the history that you have, yes. so so that we can look at that between now and when we talk about it before the Tuesday before the Monday that we talk about it. Um, uh, what else should we have in front of us to talk about structuring this? We should process. have a, a rough timeline, or maybe a firm timeline. So I propose a timeline. Yep. Okay. Does anybody want to take an action item to craft a timeline? For tonight or for the last, next meeting? For the next meeting. Sure. Oh, I, thank you, I Amy. I can work on that. That's like I do at home. I can't just say someone. I have to. Um, I have to put a name to it or. <laughs> Lobster claws. My kids hate it. Someone and I pick a name. Oh. Um, yes. Just one other thing, Madam Chairman, is <coughs> do we need to kind of have what the goal is for this group? Is that maybe just something Amy? Mission mentions? goal statement, right. something. Exactly. Right. It could that be a charge of some kind. Some a charge, charge of something. I think exactly. that's a great idea. Um, does anybody want to take an action item to work on that? I can do that. Uh, okay, yeah. Mary. Thank you. Um, I'm going to break here for one second. Yep. I am going to entertain a motion to open the public hearing. I think this is last meeting's agenda. Open the public hearing um, for Maspinock Woods. They have, um, well, let me just entertain the motion. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So they have asked to continue it, but there's a tiny bit of discussion I think that we wanted to have. Um, they asked to continue it to um, our next meeting, which is our last meeting before the election. So how do people feel about continuing it to the first meeting following the election? 
Having been on here since the summer, I've been hearing about these people and I've never ever seen them. Yeah. So I, I personally would be in favor of trying to finish up some things that are going to be impacted with board members leaving as opposed to starting something new. I so think I that's would, really, really... I'd agree with that. Yeah. So what is our first meeting in June? June 10. June 10. And what would be the deadline for their decision that we would need to ask them to extend to? Um, the attorney has agreed to um, have a deadline a week after the meeting. A week after the meeting. What are, and he's kind of counting on May 13th. So yeah, yeah. To basically have another week to, to uh, come up with this decision and file All right, so is it June 10th? Is the June, June meeting? June 10th would be the meeting, the first meeting in June. So if what you it, follow that, we'll, uh, June 17th would be the decision. Okay. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Chair, can I ask a question? What happens if we don't mm -hmm. vote to extend it? Because it, personally, I, I'm kind of like, I'm tired of these constant scheduling meeting times and extending and extending again and extending again. And it just feels, to me, it's, it's inefficient. And to be honest, I think just at some point, it's a little bit unprofessional. And I don't know if there's, are there any other options? Like, what happens if we don't extend it? Uh, without making a decision, it would be approved, I think, by default. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have no choice. We have no choice but to extend it, but we could opt to... Well, we could vote to... Make so it not approve it. Deny, deny, deny it. Or approve Or approve it. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Or that. So, so for what it's worth, I'm not saying that now is the time to do this, but I would... Personally, I'd like to start enforcing some of the stuff a little bit more closely with some of the applicants because I, I just, uh, and again, I'm not going to throw them a, you know, a curveball curve here, yep. but I just, to me, way, it, to me, it's gotten very frustrating with the constant. Is there, is there, has there ever been a limit of the number of times that somebody has passed? Uh, is it possible that we set a limit? So. I actually don't necessarily think that that's uh, the best idea, but these uh, one of the things we've, we've steps we've taken to try and mitigate for it is, for example, giving them five minutes because they keep delaying. Remember, there was a time when we'd sit here twiddling our thumbs for half hour because mm -hmm. they didn't come. So I do think that that's at least a very very reasonable approach. I, I just wanted yeah. to add that they went to the design review board in April and were asked to go back to the design review board May twenty first. So. They can't really come back to us again until after that. Okay. Right. So, what, so we're not imposing, point. certainly not imposing on them. And and uh, do, and, and does professional staff have any input or thoughts? And just that if it goes on for too long, you could ask them to withdraw and we submit when they're ready. Um, are they sh going to be short of board members to vote? So we're going to uh, two board we members will be changing, right? We haven't opened. We haven't had any discussion. We haven't even opened it. No. Oh, okay. So can I ask a question about clarity? Because is this the same um, loop where the folks came in, where some of the houses were too close to one yes. another? Yes. Yes. So different. Our, different, different issues. Issue. This is about the house in front that they. Okay. On, on Just about yeah. the house in front. Right. That's one of the two. There's now two. There's another I believe there's another proposal now. It says units 21, 22, 23, and 24. Okay. Yeah. So they, but they so have been here once because they had that discussion. For a different project. But for a different thing. Oh. Same project. Same different development. Lots. Same developer. Development. Same okay. development. Okay. Yes. So are they, they built half of them and this is future ones to be built? Or I'm just trying to understand. These are, it. This is a new set of questions, new units with a new set of questions. New units. They're, they're slightly modified. Yeah, not not additional units, but new questions on different units than we resolved before. Yeah. Then, then, so they're not building them at this point. There's no building. No, there's like three units. I drove by it yesterday. There's like three units still to be built, and okay. I believe that these questions or modifications are for those three okay. units. So that's part of it. Thank you. The other part is they've got the property at five um, west down. That's not? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's essentially it's like the backing up to the development itself, yeah. and they want to be able to kind of move the, um, the house, uh, the, the line, right? So the hundred foot buffer zone. <coughs> they want to reduce it. Anyway, just just right. as a process Hold on question, one I, don't, I think we're discussing too much for a hearing that's not happening. Okay. Well, 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 well I just want to understand. understand. Just clarify we it. We opened it. Yeah. it. Yeah. 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 I want to understand what we're. Not, so hold on one second. We're gonna we're gonna just. Um, Vote to open the continued public hearing for 76 Main Street and to continue until we resolve this conversation in a matter of moments. I'll make a motion to open the public hearing for 76 Main Street. 
Second. Second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. So my my proposal is to continue this until um, the June tenth meeting. At what time? Let's hope. Hopefully, that won't be a big challenge. So that would be seven thirty-five. Seven thirty-five. Okay. Um, and should we give them feedback that we're, you know, we're we're really seriously contemplating sending them back, you know, to, asking them to withdraw until they're ready? Yes. At that point. My opinion, yes. Well, I think this time, this one, this one scenario, I think they're done. I think they're almost ready to just give it to us. I just think that the architect hadn't finished the project. That's, but we, we're not talking about that. Should we can either oh. tell them that or not tell them that? To, not tell to them inform that. them. I, mean, okay. I don't think so. You're not telling. Yeah. How about everybody else? I don't think we need to tell them either. Okay. All right. So continue to uh, June 10th, and the decision will be continued till June 17th. Um, um, Somebody third. willing to make that I, motion directly? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, second. I motioned it, but okay. then. Okay. Do we second. second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Do Any we, abstentions? Did we extend the deadline for the episode? Yeah. The, uh, we, the, the decision. decision. So we did. Yep. Seven Thank seven you, though. <clears throat> I always appreciate help. Okay. I mean, I'm going to need your packet for having that that we're going to share. Yeah. All right. So we are ready for 76 Main Street. And then we'll come back to, yep. We'll come back to the conversation we were having. Okay. 76 Main Street? Uh, the applicant. There they are. Do you, you didn't, don't have the outline, do you? Yeah, of course I do. Come on. Um, you can't leave. You, you underestimate. Very good. All right. Almost took you out. camera from there? That's the real question. Okay. Okay, good. Yep. Yep. I don't have, have it up here so. yet, but I'm guessing it's coming. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Would you like to start by outlining your changes? Sure, we can okay. go ahead and do that. Okay. Um, so changes since we last met, um, taking into account the comments received from the assistant town manager and a few remaining comments, I believe, from Beta, we just wanted to provide a quick update on the change of the uses and then how we address that. So the comment was made that office space was not um, permissible in the mixed-use building, so we have revised to do just a combination of retail and restaurant on the first floor, keeping the residential units on the second and third floor. The impact to that was the change in parking calculations based on the retail uses versus office uses. So we provided updated calculations um, for all the parking and then to uh, proactively address the comments received from the board as well as some of the concerns expressed last time. We are proposing to take the basement area that we had shown or discussed and change that into an underground parking garage that would provide 30 parking spaces that would be dedicated for the residential tenants. 
So when we look at our revised mix, as well as the revised parking, both underground, above ground, um, we now are at a total of 94 parking spaces um, on the property. 71 spaces are required, so we have a surplus of around 23 parking spaces at this point. So we have provided all the revised calculations there. Um, and have updated the site plan, which we can go through today if you'd like okay. to reflect the um, revised kind of uh, flow for the parking garage. Okay. And those are the, the biggest changes from the site perspective. Yeah, just quite simply, the um, plan previously, we just had parking stalls in this area right over here. Uh, so simply what we did centered on this wall of the building is we cut <coughs> out a drive aisle here, put some landscape islands on either way. So that you can enter into the garage, ramp down, and have the parking. Uh, it's double loaded parking <coughs> on either side. Uh, so the site lended itself quite well to, to be able to do that. And as Kathy had mentioned, I think proactively we wanted to provide more parking based on some of the comments that we heard. It was a good opportunity to do that with the basement that was shown, expanded it, and just added some stalls there. Uh, the site itself really is unchanged, short of that area there. Okay. Question? Yes. That. <clears throat> so one of my big concerns was not a way to loop around the parking lot. Does the garage have the ability to loop around in it so somebody would not have to back up? If so the garage, um, it's single loaded as you come in, you're going to have parking on either side. Uh, one of the comments that uh, we had, I believe it was in uh, Elaine's letter, just had to do with designating uh, parking stalls for the, uh, the residential use. So what will happen is the, we need about 40 stalls to, to designate. The 30 within the, uh, the basement will be dedicated um, spaces. So as you go in, you have, you know which parking stall is yours. You're not just going in and looking for one. So everybody will have an assigned spot here, and then there will be 10. Uh, 10 John, who has the plan? If you want to speak, show that or speak Actually, to it's The interior of the garage. Uh, it's the interior the of the garage. garage. That's the plan there. As you ramp down, it's oriented the same way. The buildings here, you ramp down, and you have double loaded parking on either side here. Uh, standard parking stall sizes and drive aisle widths that would comply with your code, same as what's outside. Uh, and again, those would just be assigned so you know which stall is yours and you're going to your own stall. So, I don't. I think the answer is no. Correct. Right? No. And just a follow-up question. <clears throat> it sounds like there will be assignments as for residents only. Yes. yes. Yeah, there'll, there'll actually be a, a, a gate you have to put okay. a code in so that would go up. Nobody can just drive in there if, you know, unless they have uh, the key access. And then we'll have additional designated spaces because we need 40 total. For the residential, there'll be 10 in the back of the, the site, and those will be signed. And always maintained, or I've heard, I thought it said during certain those hours. Those 10 would be at certain times um, based on the final retail tenant mix, um, so reserved during certain hours. Um, how about from our professional planning folks? Any uh, Is there any challenge to doing an underground garage? I don't know that I, is there any place else we've done that? There have been plans that have shown it, but no one has built anything. Okay, all right, but no, there's no, nothing that keeps us from doing that. And question, yes. uh, and access to the underground garage, just a, is it a stairwell? Uh, one or two stairwells that go down from the? So, if you correct me, uh, correctly, but as you come into the, um, to the garage, you've got your, your elevator lobby uh, in okay. here and a stairwell here as well. So yeah, both. Yeah, both. Mm -hmm. Anybody else on the parking changes? I guess I had a question yeah. about uh, emergency vehicles. Uh, can you show how the fire trucks or whatever would turn around in the back now with yeah. the new design? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's unchanged from, uh, from last time, but we've run the templates for the, uh, the fire truck and emergency vehicles. Essentially, if you come in, you come this way, you have on this. But this area here, it shows up as green. It, it's a structural uh, grass. It's actually a, like a honeycomb structure that goes in there, so you can drive on top of that. Uh, we don't put any plantings in there, so it's open. But they had a larger vehicle, they could kind of pull in here and turn around. Mm -hmm. I think it was a nice way to keep some landscaping uh, and not put more paving than we, than we needed to. Um, that just shows some of the, the movements with how that would work. So we, we still have vehicles needing to back up and to, to turn around. 
Yes. So to turn around, so for instance, say somebody came in here and parked to, to load or something like that, they would continue on, they would just do a, essentially a, like a K turn in that area to leave. Rather than trying to do a turn in here, which a lot of places will do, which we just didn't want to have that in this lot. So we want to provide an area where you can turn in here, do a simple K turn maneuver, and then exit. What? Yes. So the ch snow storage in the winter? Yep, we have snow storage de dedicated on the plan in um, a couple of different areas. Um, over in this area, we have some storage. Over in uh, this area, we have uh, some storage. If snow is a very, very large storm and not able to store it there, it would have to be removed. Uh, I think having additional parking spaces now actually helps that quite a, quite a bit. Was that your question too, or did you? Have no, my, yes, go ahead. It was. Uh, um, I was just wondering what size loading area, what size truck could could occupy that loading area. For the it's designed for for a box truck. We don't have a. Um, we're restricting the access. You're not going to have a semi coming in and out of there and, and loading. Okay, is that? Normal for the size, the businesses, the the size of businesses that are, you know, proposed here. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah, I the the snow removal um, is is a concern still. You know, I I do think that you've increased it slightly from the previous plans, but um, but I'm just envisioning the, you know, how they're removing snow, even from the the access area to the garage underneath. And straight across, it's you know going into trees, and um, and I could definitely see you having some snow issues <laughs> sometimes. So yeah, yeah. it'll need to be managed. Can I, um, yeah. I have a comment and a question, and then maybe a, a comment. Um, and first, I applaud the developer on looking into this. I know that from previous comments how financially challenging this the site is and I can't imagine what underground parking costs so I think that's great that they were find a way to add some parking spots um, with a garbage truck coming in are they gonna make that left turn back to that back parking area because I know that they can pull forward and then back up but I guess I'm looking at the radius on the corner of the building there yeah that looks really challenging to me wouldn't that be the same for a fire truck yeah, yeah exactly okay yeah. No, yeah. We, we've we've run the templates on that it's again it's a two-way aisle so it's and you're coming along yeah. the outside so but yeah it's the same same thing there is enough there is enough room for them to, to make that maneuver there okay okay and then i guess my my still my big concern which i brought up last time and I think this actually is somewhat worse with the underground parking is if somebody pulls into the underground parking spot and the spots are full then now they're having to back all the way out up a ramp a blind back in into that spot where the dumpster is and then they can pull out and I, I just I, I worry like there's such a long one-way route without a turnaround at the other end other than driving over a honeycomb grass strip that's halfway um, it just it just seems very challenging if people come in looking for a parking spot, there aren't any parking spots, and, and, and now what, I don't know what they do. So like Are for me, in, in the garage or in both the inside and out, both inside and out. Because I looked at your inside plan and there's spots all the way to the end. Correct. Right. But they're assigned. They're assigned. Right. Yes, they're assigned, they're assigned parking spaces. And it'll assigned. be controlled access assigned. to the garage. Okay. So but but there's still are those reserve spots all the time or yes. so there'd be 30 spots yeah. everybody has a reserve spot right and they'll have a, their own key card essentially right. to get okay. in so you wouldn't be able to get in without that and then that gives you access okay to that particular that's good spot. and then I'd still go back to those last two spots I don't understand how they back out because you need to have some place to back into to pull forward you, you don't you don't have to do the you, you can pull in and come straight back you don't have to if you had a wall there you obviously you can't make that maneuver like you're like you're saying um, but in, in urban areas, that's, that's really what happens. There's enough room to back out with a 24-foot aisle straight out and then to make a hard, uh, a hard left or a hard right, depending on which side you park. I don't on. agree. If you have a car that's 19 feet long, you can't do that without having to go back some ang to angle. I mean, there's, there's just, I mean, it's a 14-point it's a turn. I don't, I don't agree with that. 
Um, so, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, I had one more point, yeah. and this is not just for you, but just for in general. Um, the concept of the minimum parking spaces that we have in our zoning bylaws are truly a minimum, and really should not be looked at by any developers as this is all that's needed for my development. And I appreciate the, um, what you say excess now, you know, 94 spots, I think is much more of an adequate parking for this type of development. Um, we want businesses to be successful. We want the residents to have a place to park without, you know, without going onto the street or, or other things. Um, and I think it's very important to consider that as much as we might want to um, see that people are using public transportation and so on, you know, the reality is that we're suburban and people have cars. <laughs> and we need places for people to park if they're going to use these businesses, if they're going to come to this restaurant, and if they're going to live there. Um, and, uh, but I do appreciate the, the changes that we've made that um, provide much more than the minimum because the minimum is not designed to be just what you're going to need. So. Amy, did you have another oh, question? I was wondering about the delivery trucks. The de how many delivery box trucks can fit in the, in the delivery location? I'm sorry. The, the box trucks, the delivery trucks, how many can fit in that designated area? Well, it's designed for one at a, one at a time. Just it's one. It's not meant to be. It just concerns me that it's, the site is so challenged for space. If two were to come in the same half an hour period, like how do they get past each other and without hitting cars and get turned around and get out? Or do they block the entrance? I think that would be extremely rare that that, that, that would happen. It's not a high delivery type of a type of a use. Uh, Restaurants, I would uh, imagine, for, would be. deliveries, though, they, they'll come every few days. It's not. It's not like you've got. That's constantly right. coming. Uh, excuse me. I'm sorry. So I Go think ahead. it's very rare that that would um, that that would happen. Deliveries are going to be generally on off peak hours as well. So if there happened to be a situation when you had a delivery truck that was that was there, um, another one happened to, to to show up, the lot likely wouldn't be full. You're not going to be coming right at the at the main you know hour where the restaurants in business or something along those lines. That I would guess. Be the case I was thinking that because it's mixed use, so it's not a peak hour for the business early in the morning, but the residents will all be there because they won't have left yet, so the sites can still be pretty full. Yeah, but the residents will be in the garage now, so again, there's only going to be 10 okay. um, stalls in the, in the back. back that would be out, so okay. I think with the, the amount of parking here, definitely is, is more than, than, than adequate um, for, the, for the uses. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think if my numbers are right, it's a 30% increase in the number of spaces. I mean, I mean to, to your point, you could almost take one of the spots in the back. If you needed more space to be able to turn back in there, you've got it, right? You've got 23 more spots to be able to, you've got some flexibility um, on that. I think it also helps a little bit with delivery trucks, um, depending on if it's uh, a restaurant in the front or how they're going to do it, right? But it's going to be the retail piece. Um, I don't know when delivery trucks arrive. I assume they're in the morning, right? So that should mitigate some of the traffic issues coming back and forth. Correct. Through the chair. Yes. So I still have a, a big concern about the traffic flow in the parking lot with all the, as Jerry, Gary said, with all the parking spots full. So if you have three cars coming in to get to the dead end, and you're going to have three cars being backing up at the same time trying to <coughs> reverse direction. Um, I, I wanted to ask our, uh, our engineer and our um, Elaine some of the input on this, but I don't know if now is the right time. So let me, let me suggest that um, it is on the agenda specifically okay. and we'll march down to it. Okay. Because um, I have a few, I, I think we all have some more questions. The parking, um, I'll be candid, the parking is a challenging contemplation for me. Um, and I, I, like Fran said, I think that it, and Gary's point, I think that contemplating losing a couple of your extra spots to make it um, a, a more visionable flow and turnaround is probably sensible. Um, but we can talk about that more at length when we get to the parking in particular. Um, 
just looking this way, Elaine, do you have anything more to add specifically as we get started marching through the agenda? No. Okay. And there's no changes from engineering standpoint. They're all set, right? Beta's all set. Okay. Um, oh, you know what? We have parking lot layout and vehicular pedestrian flow in two different spots. So we just like crush those. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do both of those. Is there anything else? All right. So um, let's let's ask all our questions on vehicular pedestrian traffic flow, truck traffic flow, emergency vehicle access, parking lot layout, dumpster location, snow storage, and snow removal. Um, I also have a question about um, the how we control for deliveries arriving. Um, scheduling deliveries at off-peak hours and making sure that that happens. That's a, that's a really tough street. And I know a delivery truck is only one, one truck coming in or out. But that is a really challenging spot. So, um, and then we will also open it up to the public for questions on, on all of those topics right, that are part of the parking lot, part of the traffic flow. Um, okay. So, um, so we're specifically, we, we started talking about it. Does anybody have any, I mean, are, are we gonna be held up? But where, are your, where are your sticking points on the parking, traffic flow, pedestrian safety? I'm looking at the board members, Deb. I, I have some real concerns about um, the general width of the parking, the going and coming um, access, access, whether it's wide enough. Um, I, I'm just feeling like this is what you do when you don't have space. You overfill it, but we're in the suburbs and I just don't feel that this type of density and the type of traffic that we're gonna be putting on this site is gonna bear what we're gonna wanna live with in the future. I just think it's too narrow. We're living with it down in um, by the bank and by Starbucks, and I, I, in a heavy trafficked area, I won't go into that parking lot. It's just too much. So I have some real questions to about that. Are you? I'm the, looking the, at a twenty. I'm looking at a, a a nineteen twenty foot space, and then I'm just with my pencil. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at what seems to be the same amount of space lengthwise. How, how wide actually is that drive access? When you say the drive access, are you referring just, to the parking the, stalls or the No, drive the driveway. The driveway, the the driveway. driveway. between. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the, yeah. Where your arrows are going, left yeah. and right. Yeah. All the way through yeah. Yeah. here? No, yeah, going back and how forth. How wide is that between parking spaces? Oh, between parking spaces. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's standard, um, standard width. It's a 20, uh, 24 foot drive. Standard line. to what standards? General engineering practice. So if you're, so it's 24 foot. So is Starbucks less than 24 feet? I don't know. I don't know. So what, what we're, the, the pressure that we're feeling is that what, what is new standard may not be what is the standard for Hopkinton. Um, I'm finding this to be very, very tight, 24 feet. It just seems like it's overly, it's, it's a lot of weight on this site and that there's not going to be enough. Everybody seems to be concerned about whether the trucks are going to be coming on and that you've done the plan, but I'm, but I'm still seeing a lot of unhappy people coming in and out of the site just because it's a dead end, a dead end delivery. So the site and the width, I don't, John, you can speak yeah. to this, is built to the town standards as well as defined here. Mm -hmm. And based on the, our traffic consultants as been verified by, by beta as well as Bowler's input, the traffic flow, the increased trip can all be supported with, by the site design. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's the same thing as the price chopper. So do you think that's narrow? I mean, I haven't gone and measured it, but I think that's 24 feet also. I think we should go measure. Okay. I mean, not that, again, we're, we're conforming but, regardless, but I think if okay. you even go into Stop and Shop, you go to Market Basket, they're all going to pretty much be in the 24-foot yeah, range. It's, the, it's an industry yeah. standard. It's really, everyone's making this site so tight. This site is actually, works very, very well. Well, I think, oh, I think, yeah. well. No back and forth. Okay. okay. Kara, is it, is it 24 feet 
around the corner too? Because just yeah. from my angle, it looks yeah, it's hard narrow. Yeah, it's angle, but it, it's it's a hundred percent. 24 feet. Um, compliant as well as industry standard at the 24 foot um, aisles. Through the chair, a quick comment? Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think it's fair to compare it to Price Chopper because there's, you can loop around. You don't have to back up in Price so, Chopper. Okay. So. I, I actually don't want to compare it to other spots either because we're, we're not talking about Price Chopper or anything else. We're talking about Sorry. this one. And I, I, I'm rhythming with the fact that it's, a, it's constraining and difficult, right? And I think the board members are feeling that. And um, and I, I do think that no ability to loop around does is a different kind of challenge for us, but it doesn't mean it, we can't figure it out. I'm just saying that I I think it's different too. Yes, just one last question: the the hatch space on the this side of the yep, yeah, what's that? Um, I presented that the last um, the initial introduction, but I'll, I apologize for not uh, revisiting that. So if you're and this goes to your comments, right? when, you, when you come in here, again, these spaces are free spaces. You can park for, for, wherever. And the odd chance that every single one of these spaces were, were filled, which that, that wouldn't happen with the amount of parking here, but in the odd chance that, that it was, this space is designated no parking. So that's why we striped it out. So if you come all the way down here and you couldn't find a stall, you can turn in here to make a to make a turn. You can, you can frankly turn in the garage, but we added another for the entry to the garage. You turn around, but we added another stall here just to be safe. You can come in so you don't get trapped, and then you can turn around. And just to take it a step further, you heard the same comment about the garage. We can stripe stripe a spot up a spot up like that in the garage as well. I'm sorry, say that again. We can do this in the garage as well. That last stall, we can stripe yeah. that out as well. Yeah. That's not a that's not a problem. Carol, did you have a follow-up no, question? No, I, I just, I think the stripe spot addresses Gary's question of how you get out of that last spot if everything is full. And personally, I don't, if the garage parking is assigned parking and you can't get in there without a key card, you're going to have a spot to pull into, so I don't know why we need to take one of those spaces yeah. Yeah. and negate it for no, no benefit in my mind. So... Gary, does that extra striped spot solve your question? I didn't think it did. So it does, to me, it makes it easier to back out and turn around from that last spot because it gives you a little bit of width to come yeah. around. Okay. Um, I, I realize that we're sensitive on parking and, and that we don't want to eliminate spots unnecessarily, but um, I. I been in a lot of, I mean, Logan Airport, I've been in a lot of parking lots, and you get that last spot against the wall, um, even with my car, which is n not the biggest of cars, uh, it's really, really hard mm -hmm. to back out. So for me, I like having that buffer zone. Um, you know, I, I don't know if there's an opportunity to leverage that either for a walkway or elevator access or um, even for disabled parking, you know, there, there might be some other way to utilize that buffer zone and just pull those glass spots away from that wall, because I think that that substantially improves the ability to get in and out of that last spot. Just one other thing on that last spot in the garage, Louis LeBeau architect. Sorry. Sir, oh, sorry. you just have to come forward. Folks at home can't hear you if you speak from the... Sorry. <laughs> Louis LeBeau architect. Uh, the last spots also, just for the record, are 10 feet wide instead of 9 feet wide to account for the fact that they're against the wall. Um, that helps to some extent, and, and obviously we can always inc include an additional striped off spot if that's, that's what it comes to. I guess I have a question, too. As far as it transferring over to commercial space, um, I'm, I'm a little concerned about what does that mean because it's a non-defined space right now. Do you have any idea what the tenants will be? I'm just saying that because if it's an increased amount of traffic going in and out of there, is there a potential that that could be a, a, a traffic snafu? So relative to the, um, the traffic model, the, the numbers were run based on a um, a retail um, use, which has a higher uh, usage than, than office, which is why mm -hmm. we did that. Mm -hmm. um, so within that, there's different, within the different bands of retail uses, it's 
generally still Can the same. Can you point me to the page that that, that that is stated on? I'm sorry, there's a lot of material. Can you point me to the study where, what page that study is on? The traffic study? Yeah, the newly revised one for the retail. Uh, the well, if you look at the zoning analysis table on page four of the site plan, that will give you the breakdown of the square footage and the parking for that. And then you can look at the traffic memo. Does that have it as well? Do you have, do you have a hard April 16th. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. It's on the uh, table one and two. Breaks it down by general retail, restaurant. And how did that change? How did, how did that change from when the, it was off? The 2,500 square feet of office went away and 2,500 square feet of general retail were added to retail. I thought in the package materials it also said some residential on the first floor, first level. No? Okay. And then there are updated numbers you see in that memo. It includes the outdoor patio seating as well. Where, where is the outdoor patio seating? So the patio is located right, right here. Oh, but that's for the restaurant. Yes. That's for the restaurant. Not yes. for the residents. There's no, no. outdoor no. barbecue no. spot or no. or no place for them to park their bikes. Is there a place to park bikes? Yes, there's bike, bike racks in We're, the garage as in well as the garage. Um, the garage and outside. But there's no place for them to sit and have a picnic or any no, not no, every day. No. Nope. Okay. Deb, you all set with that? I'm all set. I'm just okay. looking at the numbers. Yeah, Thanks. Yeah. So a direct yeah. comparison to what was in the original study versus that one was in table two. Ah, oh, yes. Thank you. It adds up all the numbers. The total of that one is in that one. Thanks. I believe it's about one trip every six minutes or so. So who is, um, who is in charge of the unusual snow event that will necessarily happen? Uh, I am. I'm in charge. Okay. So, <laughs> so what? What's the backup plan? I mean, it's, just, it's like um, you know the other buildings I own. Obviously, if we have a huge snowstorm, you know we make sure that we always have plenty of parking spaces. So uh, the protocol is if we've got a pretty big snow event, we'll have it removed at night by the time you know the morning comes around. So basically, it comes down to how much snow we get. But we will truck it off site if required. And that's, that was stated in our one Lumber Street conditions and right. as well. We would expect something similar. And, and we'll all have Paul's cell phone number. Uh, you all, you all come to 110 uh, Grill or you come to the complex and I think there's plenty of park in there. <laughs> well, that's what you do at that complex, right? You, you try we do that if there's any extra. I mean, right now there's a tenant across the street that may park sometime in my lot. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember what that name of that company is. So You know what? I live in America. I park wherever I want. Yeah, I'm exactly. just saying that. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, um, okay. Walk us through pedestrian flow just one more time. So through pedestrian flow, there are uh, fully compliant walks throughout the, uh, the, the site. You've got a sidewalk along the front. comes to here. You also have a walk around the back. Both connect to the, uh, to the street. Uh, everything is fully ADA compliant with slopes and connection points. I have, I have one more. I, sir, sir, from looking at the um, tables, I have a question for you. If you could tell me a little bit, because retail is sort of, it, it can encompass a lot of different types of shops and lots of different kind, kinds of uses. Um, how does how do you how does the uh, how are those numbers derived because they've decreased considerably from from from, from, from yeah from table two to table one yeah from office so so how 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 is that derived so how, how is, does one derive a, re, a retail use these are the use? retail uses here industry standards so they go to count shopping centers across the United States and Canada um, um, for square footage for general retail uses. So those are summarized here, and then you add in the restaurant, the residential, and these are your total. So you, these are your, your total that call me here. Yeah. You've heard of that before. So it actually it does go up by 14. It goes, what goes up? The so, oh, this is the difference is, 
plus oh, 14. Oh, so it goes up plus 14. Correct, so it goes up. Where even though entering is only six, and here it's 20. So even it's plus three, it turns out to be plus three. So wait, this is the, yeah, this all, is the new one. These are the new ones. You have the retail, the restaurant, and the residential. I think we can only go yeah. with the industry standards for calculations. <laughs> right, right. So you guys right. This total right. trip column is the same as the total well, 47 so it's, and 47. It's, this is the total previously, which was office, retail, restaurant, residential. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out. Right. Thank you. you. Thanks. I'm just trying to, to kind of wrap my head around a little bit. Sorry. So you have the original okay. study. Yeah. That's the original total. So you have office, retail. So your retail before was producing seven. We're now going to produce nine. Is there nine. ever a breakdown between what that retail is? Like if it's a bank, if it's a, you know, if it's a, um, a, a woman's shop, if it's a, a little grocery store. Did, is there ever a finite breakdown if, in the standards? If it's a supermarket, you would use a supermarket rate instead of a general retail. Mm -hmm. Um, if you could have like a bank. If it's a coffee uh, shop. Retail, a coffee shop, we would probably run like a, a coffee shop restaurant. So, so, the, like so the these rest, could change, these retail the, numbers could change. So for the restaurant, we use so the restaurant standard. Can I jump in? Yes. My understanding is, Deb, is that retail encompasses a lot of variables and the, the, we, can't, we can't actually know to the detail of calculation. No, true, but what I'm saying is what he's saying is he's saying that depending on the retail, that there are those numbers as well. And right. So there is right. this general we overall. We don't know what that is, so we right. use the industry standard for retail as what we're. Yes, the, we the industry to standard for come up with trips for. We know there's a restaurant in there, so we use the restaurant. I, I totally place. understand. I got it. At I'm this stage, it. I totally I'm, understand I'm too. I'm following it. Um, <clears throat> some, are, some are high and some are low. When you put them all together, it's a it's general. What they're at. Yeah, it's, it's an industry standard for calculation finish. before you know. Okay. Grant, did so, you have yeah, another I, question? I just had one question. I feel going around the horn here, but. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to kind of maybe get Beta's comment, um, Phil, on you on the flow, right? There's a lot of questions back and forth on the, the flow going in and out, the width. Is it compliant? I mean, did you guys look at what um, Boulder did? Um, yeah, so um, as, as the engineer mentioned, uh, the parking space are, are standard size, uh, and I've, done, I've designed many um, shopping. Uh, uh, supermarkets where you get carts and everything else and like that. So the, 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 the width of the aisle is standard 24 foot wide. It's, it's actually wider than many of your roads. And, um, and then, yeah, and then there's... So, and, and uh, I think the, the added driveway for the garage makes it a much People are going to use that area to turn around, not the little little stripe there on the, the end. The farthest one down. So yeah. So if they get there now, now mind you, you've you've added thirty three percent more. Yeah, you know, thirty thirty more spaces. So it's less likely that all of them are going to be full, unless you've got a you know super or super awesome restaurant there that's got a waiting, waiting line at the door. <laughs> I mean, like can I? I mean, I'm probably more concerned than you are as far as the parking. So, I mean, again, I'm cognizant about that every single day. And I would not put a restaurant in here if I didn't think that it could handle it. Um, I mean, we're getting, you know, we're trying to get the approvals for 60 seats. Um, before we had the last meeting, you know, I was like, there's no way we're having a restaurant in this place. So, and that's why when I said, can we do something with the underground parking, how many spaces can we get? Because the last thing I want to do, the last thing my tenants want to do, if there's not enough parking, I'm not going to have tenants and I'm not going to have customers. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably more concerned than you are. But do you have a, do you, is that right? Go ahead, chair. Go ahead. Through the chair. Um, is it, is, do you have any kind of concept of what's going in that commercial space? I don't. I don't. I mean, we're going to, I'm hoping that we get a bank. We need another bank in town. Um, Dry cleaner? Uh, we need, well, I was thinking not no, a dry cleaner. Fresh. <laughs> maybe another pizza, maybe another pizza place. But, um, <laughs> he so, uh, triplets in the I am, jobs. again, I'm very aware. Uh, so when you say, what's my concept? Uh, the concept that'll be, you know, bring a lot to the plaza that won't have too much parking, or, you know, that won't give me a problem. That's, you know, so with the extra 30 spaces, I think we've addressed a lot of that. 
Okay, that's appreciated. Through Thank the chair. You. Yeah, did, Carol, are you all set? I am. Well, I'm going to come well, around. Yes. I, I do want to go yeah. around. Just, we had Beta up here. I just wanted to take advantage of while yeah, Beta no, was up yeah. here, if we could yeah. ask him some questions. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. So, Phil, we keep saying the word turnaround. I, I just don't think that's a, a good thing for a commercial site, turnaround. Um, you don't have turnarounds at a supermarket or anything else like that. Do you feel comfortable that cars will be reaching the end and have to turn around? Do you think that's a good experience for traffic? Well, I, I, again, if the only reason they would be turning around is if they've gone through the whole parking lot and there's no space to park. And by the time you get there, I mean, his, his business is going to be fairly booming to get there and, and there's no parking spots because you're going to pull in to the closest one or, if, you know, I don't know if the, you know, if your business is on the end of the building, you're going to go down to that closest to that door and, and pull in. When you back out again, you're going to back out to, to move out. So it's, it may be occasionally that happens, but I, I don't, unless... You know, unless he's got a, you know, I mean, I, I think the Starbucks issue is a, is a completely different issue because people are camped out there uh, a lot of, during the day. I don't know. If once, once again, we shouldn't do the chair. We shouldn't do comparisons, but Starbucks does have a loop around it. It does have a flow. You do not have to back up at Starbucks. But it's, it's also got more than one entrance. So mm -hmm. right, people which, coming in different ways. This has got one way in, one yeah, way out. My, 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 that's my big concern through the chair is that it's one way in, one way out. That, that's the biggest concern I have, that there's not a second outlet. And to be honest with you, uh, I know there was pushback and I'd like to ask you, Lane, but why can't there be access on the police department road? Should we ask? Have you, has anybody talked to them? I mean... I don't know if they have or not. You responded to that one, John. Do you want to speak yeah, to that? Yeah, we, we did take your comment seriously and we went back and looked yeah. at it again. Um, we, the site has a, has a slope to it. We want to put the building on the high side sure. of the site and then slope down. <coughs> we can while still keeping stalls that, that make sense. You don't want them too steep that the doors fly open sure. and, and all of that. So we kept the building on the high side and we sloped down as fast as we could and still get with a comfortable um, grade. That still results in about a four, four to five foot grade difference from the corner here to the, to the, to the roadway elevation. We've actually got a wall that starts where my finger is and moves all the way around to, to here based on my grade difference. So I think from a, a topographical standpoint, there's not the, really the ability to, to, to do that. Okay. Yeah. I, was, I was not aware of that, so thank you for pointing yeah, that yeah, out. Yeah, it it's really a great issue. But we yeah. I mean, I... I understand the site, and I'm not questioning the parking at all. I'm just trying to think of the, the user experience with the traffic flow. And so. Can I ask a question about that on that same yeah. point? Um, you have a ramp going down to the basement parking. Um, what's the difference in grade there? Um, I'm not sure I fully follow the question, but... Well, I, I guess, I guess you're, you're, you're saying that there's a five to six foot difference between the grade on okay. the adjoining property and the parking lot. Yeah. But it seems like you've got a ramp going down, so there's going to be at least a eight or nine foot difference in grade when you go underground parking. So I don't. I guess I'm not quite following the rationale that you can't deal with that change in elevation. So the way the, the way we dealt with it in the garage, you've got a pretty significant throat uh, in that area. So essentially starting from here to here. Uh, okay. And along outside of the building within that area. You just don't have the, the room in the parking lot to be able to do that and without essentially dropping. Got it. Are you still? Okay. That's helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Hold on one second. We're going to come around the table and we'll come back. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Thank you. I think I'm good. I just want to point out that there are a lot of members of the public that might also have comments on the parking yeah, changes. So I'm getting there. So I'm um, yep. mm -hmm. going to talk. More. Mary? We're just talking parking, right? Just talking to parking, parking, traffic flow. Uh, I did want to ask the fire chief to um, to tell us how comfortable. I assume that you have looked at this plan um, and how comfortable you are with the the backing, the K turn situation. Um, then then I would only have one other point. No. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Good evening. Um, I haven't seen the uh, sweat path analysis. I did talk to Paul and asked to see that move. So. Um, 
I'm looking at the TV. I just, um, it looks like it's a little snug in some of the clearances, so I would just go through that with the architect at some point to confirm that it meets the clearances. I think just from a code standpoint, our, uh, our fire engineer would just, uh, I'm drawing a blank on 527, whether it actually allows for the uh, utilization of where oncoming traffic might be. So when, when you get into the corner of the parking lot, yeah. you're showing a swept path if there's a car there or not. So you might even know that off the cuff better than me, but I'm, there's a little bit on uh, whether you can use oncoming traffic or not. But, I mean, this one has to be co-compliant, unlike some of the scenarios right. we do with driveway conversations. Right. That's kind of a different platform. So here, they have to meet 527, and 527 calls out that the swept path can't go into oncoming vehicles, then he's gonna have to demonstrate this room to get by that. Okay. So I just, I, I, Usually I'll just go through that with them in a side meeting. I haven't done that yet. Okay, so that does need to happen. Did Point. you have a follow-up question? One yeah. quick comment hold on, leave. hold on, Listen. we're not leaving. My follow-up question had to do with the crosswalk across um, across Main Street that we talked about last time. So not for the fire chief. Okay. Just one so, quick yep. comment. Yep. Thank you. Um, Steve, I'll just ask you when you do the swept path analysis, please consider that corner because if there's two the two park in the corner, upper left corner, because if there's cars parked in those two spots on each side, it looks kind of tight to me. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah, um, so obviously my first choice would be able to not back. Right. Um, from a code compliance standpoint, I think if they demonstrate that they can turn around, I think that complies. So yeah. but in the conversation, if we have the ability to drive around, I did say that to Paul, you know, in the, my ideal scenario is most of the parking lots that we deal with <laughs> you're able to drive around and I don't have to back. Right. The, the activity in a business is more than what I face in a private driveway. So um, right. trying to monitor somebody pulling in behind you on a large piece of equipment, especially in our emergency conditions, can get a little hairy. So if that's your only way to reposition is backing all, you know, is the challenge of that site. So right. code compliance wise though, I think this would be an option. Again, we haven't gotten to that point yet, okay. um, how that's marked or not. Okay, thank you. It's, I, I, it's certainly got good proximity to, to the, the fire chair, department. To the chair, I have one question for the fire chief. So, sorry, um, this is just for my edification. So when you um, have somebody to rescue in the parking garage, do you ever pull into the parking garage? No. Or do you pretty much answer from outside? Yep, yeah, it's low okay. ceilings, our equipment doesn't fit. We have to practice for advancing and it's a challenge but again it'll meet code the architect has to design it so that it is code compliant it'll have special fire protection it is a challenge for us but it's not like something yeah. i say yes and no to yeah yeah okay thank All you right, thank you yes oh, one more sorry well, I, I have one last question okay i just want to know do you have any concerns with not being able to go all the way around the building if there's a fire or anything that you'd be able to to adequately address that issue I think it's probably the same comments, not to frustrate you. Uh, in a perfect world, I can go all the way around a building. There are a lot of examples, and code compliance is he, he's going to have a measurement of it can't exceed 250 feet in a sprinkler building that I can get a hose line to. Yeah. So that's how they get around these tighter sites, and we have buildings like that. So. Yeah. Okay. I have one more question. Oh, yes. Steve. Go ahead. Sorry. On um, hydrant locations, it's just look i don't know if you've reviewed the plans or not but um one of the hydrants is back where the proposed snow accumulation area is in that bottom corner in the the northeast corner I'm gonna have to that bottom left. yeah northeast. so we generally talked about hydrants and oh, sorry northwest sorry we generally talked about hydrants they're going to make sure i have a hydrant in the back in a uh, place that's accessible for us to use so I just don't know where they end up located. Okay. And, and I guess my concern is that the hydrant is also in the same place where the, the snow, snow storage, storage is. Yeah. Which just again looks problematic to me. I don't know if I'd want a hydrant buried. So normally at this point I'll even let probably uh, normally Paul would probably respond back is if we find out that there's a that this would be a better location because of that, that's normally a really easy ask for me. So um, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. We hadn't really, he just had already assured me I'd have one towards the rear of the property, so I didn't have to bring a hose line all the way in and limit my access once I get in there. We're getting more in the co-gas, 
So if he wants three, he wants four, he wants five, he has an easy one. The fire chief gets whatever he wants. <laughs> I like it. Do I ever say yes to you? <laughs> Yeah, it did. Okay, so just one more follow-up from Gary's question that I didn't really hear an answer is, what is the slope of the access to the parking garage? Slope. Just not the throat, just the slope from the, the slope drive? The slope is 8% at the exterior, and then once you get the inside, it's a parking garage, so we go to 16%, and there's a transition area back down to 8%, and then back down to 2% uh, to, to, to slope across the parking area. So 8% with how many feet? That how, is so uh, how 1 in 12. So it slopes down 1 foot in every 12 feet, like a handy. So it's not, completely a, it's not completely subterranean then? No. So what happens is the... Yeah, maybe in the elevation. Do you have the rear elevation? I have the rear elevation, yes. The access to the parking garage is here. So we slope down about two feet essentially above uh, outside, and then the rest of the slope takes up a considerable portion of the building. So in addition to the cost of the parking, we're losing you know, some, some prime tenant space to access the, the parking garage. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Um, I had one, one last question, uh, and I, I apologize if I already asked it. Um, how do you control for deliveries uh, only coming at off-peak times. No, we don't have any times. That's what the that's what the discussion was for safety was off-peak deliveries. Right. So I didn't misread that. Right. No, that we would try to do it off-peak. So we similar to, to what we have now with our tenants, there are kind of agreed upon preferred times with the tenants of when deliveries are allowed. Well, what, what it said was that you would restrict the size of the delivery trucks and limit deliveries to off-peak times. You didn't say try in that sentence. You said you would restrict it when I read it. So we will have an agreement in place formally. as We have an informal agreement now with our tenants as to when deliveries are allowed in order to facilitate the flow with the current properties. So we had, um, we had talked about doing something similar with the tenants that go into that space. So the only tenant I think we're concerned about would be the potential restaurant with the deliveries. The rest of it being retail would most likely be more of the FedEx truck or the UPS delivery or the smaller scale than the box truck. So. Or not necessarily smaller scale, right? A UPS truck could be pretty big. I don't know. I mean, we, we wouldn't so, be able to police that. I mean, that would be right. pretty impossible right. to do that. But typically, that, that was my, trucks, that, There's well, my question, Paul, well, right? Yeah, well, it's the same thing, uh, again, almost in any site, any commercial site. I mean, pretty much they come when there are not a lot of cars there. So they're going to come 6.30, 7, 7.30 in the morning. They're going to try to come before there's, you know, a lot more cars in the parking lot. But if, you know, if there's a, a delivery at 10 o'clock, you know, again, I think it's kind of unrealistic to say that you can only deliver between, you know, six and eight. It's, it's not going to happen. Right. So I, I think that, um, I think that it does, it's necessarily hard to factor yes. for. And that particular location is really challenging um, from an emergency standpoint and uh, particularly at, let's just say, school traffic times. Um, so a really hard time going through that spot is... 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I just, I, I guess I leave that question open, right? That Well, challenging how? You're, you're saying a lot of traffic at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah. From, right. Yeah. Yeah, and it's the fire station is right across the street. I mean, there's, there, are, there are things to think about for sure. Right. The police station is right next door. We'll know who to call. Did you have a question? One, one more thing. I just wanted to know, in your experimentation when you, where you placed the, the, the facility, did you, try, did you try to do a loop around the building? Have, did you experiment with that and it just wasn't successful? There's not enough width of the lot to, um, to do a full circle. Correct. Okay. Let me ask you this. Would you be, uh, would you be amenable to a condition on regular deliveries? You know your predictable deliveries again I mean we can talk about that but I again it's not on who's gonna police it you're gonna well, that is the I mean question I don't think 
you represented in your documents that you would restrict it. So I'm asking you how. Well, I guess we'll be amenable to saying yes. they can only do deliveries from, you know, whatever times we come up with. But Okay, let's, said, let's, let's at least talk about that, okay? okay? I think we would just want to narrow down the types of deliveries. Obviously, UPS, FedEx, where, you know, a lot of that is not within our control. Right. But if we have a restaurant with food deliveries and supply deliveries, that's a little bit more in the control of the tenant, and we're Okay, open so I'm, I'm just going to label that a fair question, and we'll figure that out. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask, I think that this is going to be sort of the, one of the bigger topics, so I'm going to ask for public's input on this, if we can make some space. So if I can, yeah, uh, I, I just want to suggest that you clarify exactly what you want public comment on right now. Yes. For, for yes. For that, they're better. Yeah. Just yeah. specify. So the topics at hand are vehicular and pedestrian traffic flow, um, truck traffic flow, emergency vehicle access. The parking lot layout, dumpster location, which we have not asked and talked about, but maybe we're all set. Snow storage and snow removal. Those are the those are the major topics at hand for public input at this at this time. And you do have to just process wise, you have to come forward. I do have to ask you guys to make space because they need to be able to. That's okay. Um, you have to um, introduce yourself and your address. Um, and try and keep your comments as succinct as possible. Yes. Yes, hi, I'm Sean McGinnis, and I live at 8 Summer Street, and uh, I'm one of the three immediate abutters. We, I'm one of the persons that parallels where the building is being built. And I'm sorry I wasn't at the last meeting. I did distribute notes, but I'm not so sure that anybody even got my notes. But I understand that the topic right now is parking vehicular and pedestrian etc yeah so I have to say I honestly don't mind looking at parking I don't mind the amount of parking spaces that they have I'd actually rather be looking at parking than at the building <laughs> I'm very concerned about the loop road and the lack of a uh, fire access I realize it's to code and with a sprinkled building you do have a lot of leeway with fire access but I agree with with the concern about the fire access because if that building is truly only 10 feet off the property line which in the in the last set of drawings it looked like it was only 10 feet off the property line unless that it, well and per the building code that does need to be a fire rated exterior wall if it's within 10 feet of the property line so again I'm very concerned with the proximity of it to the property line and the fact that there's no loop road for fire fires to okay. um, be fought yep yep I'm curious, I know this is, might be off topic, I'm curious if he looked at mirroring that whole site so that we were looking at the parking rather than at the back side of the building. Because honestly, my neighbors who are right up front, they've got balconies staring right into their, right into their bedrooms. And okay, if the so whole that project- that would definitely be off topic, but we will, there will be a time for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay. And, uh, I, you know, I'm all for progress and I'm all for building commercial retail downtown. I in no way want to prevent this project from happening, but I do think that there's some opportunity to make the project better and, and it would be acceptable to myself and my neighbors. That's an awfully big building that is towering over us. If it were flipped, you would have fire access from the uh, police station side. That police station access road would be your fire access. I understand it's a five foot drop. There's a lot you can do with, with grading and contours. This is a, going to be a substantially priced project so a little bit of additional grading and regrading is not going to affect the budget that considerably that would give you your fire truck access you won't need to fire rate that exterior wall we won't have a big building towering over us uh, there's there's a lot of reason I would like to see it mirrored or at least attempted to mirror it we, we then won't have to listen to the air conditioners running all the time the exhaust kitchen exhaust fans are very loud we wouldn't have to listen to that Okay. So off topic, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but I, I definitely understand how you get to it from this topic. But yeah. um, I, what I really recommend to people who have, um, and you said you had written comments. Mm -hmm. Did we get them in our packet? Two so, weeks ago, you would have okay. gotten them. I was out okay. of town two okay. weeks ago. All right, perfect. Well, yeah. you would have gotten them about two and a half weeks ago. Yeah, that's what I recommend, though, mm -hmm. is if you have a specific detailing of concerns, um, and I will commit to going back and rereading that if you submitted that. Um, you always submit in writing if you yep. are comfortable with that, because yep. it is a little bit easier for us to go back and forth. Yes, to. it was in writing, April okay. 5th. Perfect. If you can't find it, I can reach it. I sent it to um, I, I'm, I'm sure we, we got yeah. it. I'm, sh I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was mostly asleep last time. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> I'm just speaking, I'm only gonna speak, I'm only speaking writing, for myself. I'm just recording what you yep, said. <laughs> I'm only speaking for myself. I have been working around the clock. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I think it was printed out at our last meeting. It was it printed was, for it us at the meeting. Okay. So I don't think it was in the packet. Um, Perfect. Thank you. I will. Yes. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. India Nolan, 26 Chamberlain Street. Um, <clears throat> So as we've been talking about backing up and you know how we're going to have this that, and the other thing, I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> I'm really, you know, for the amount of retail and shopping and everything that I do and have done, and being a librarian and having, you know, worked where there's like no parking, um, it seems to me that we're kind of not being realistic when we're talking about one vehicle coming in and needing to back up and come out again. And all the cars are going to be in their places waiting for this to happen. You know, in the, you, you go to any place and you've got cars coming in, cars pulling out. How, you know, there's going to be more, you know, you have a garbage truck coming in or you have, you know, and if there is, God forbid, an emergency. You know, everyone's going to try and get out, and there you've got one place for your emergency vehicle. So I've just never been in a parking lot where it's like only one thing is happening. You know, this to me is like, you know, you've got, what if there's two trucks? What so if India, there are India, just speaking for myself, I'm not assuming that there's only one car coming in or out. I, no, I, I I'm not thinking. For you're you're assuming that. I'm thinking that that's the way that they are presenting it is as if there's only one truck going to be in, then they can back out. Meanwhile, all the cars are, you know, it, it doesn't make, it, there's a lot of density here. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even talking about, you know, all of the conversations on Hopkinton on Common about what's going to happen when they, you know, now we have 90 spaces and we're thinking, that's great. I'm thinking this is a nightmare for Main Street. I'm, you know, I'm the density of this and um, where it's located and the fact that we're losing a historical, you know, the second oldest, I mean, the whole thing is, yeah, it is very upsetting. It is, okay. It is definitely parking that we're talking about and we definitely have um, all the okay, other features so the on the agenda. Okay, so the parking for me is problematic because I don't think it's... We're, talk, we're focusing enough on the fact that many things will probably be happening at the same time, not just one truck needing to back up. Maybe three or four vehicles needing to back up, having okay. to line up. Then can people pull out of their own, back out of their own parking lots? This, to me, is reality. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Palmer, Hello. welcome. John Palmer, 87 Main Street. I have uh, two questions. One's a... Uh, general question, and they're both tra uh, traffic related. One's a general question, one's specific. The general question is, has there been any input to the planning board by either the police department or the fire department as to the potential impact of a fire or police emergency during the day with the added traffic that may be going in and out of this uh, uh, development? That was my question. It has it been? Have they had? Have they made any any input to this? So the standard the standard process is to is to get, gather. You send out a, uh, an invitation for feedback from departments. Okay. So I can tell you that we have not heard that that's a problematic situation. I don't know that that specific question has been asked. Okay. But we do seek the input of all town departments. Okay. And this the specific question I had, and I raised this last time, where, where is this, uh, the uh, crosswalk to Main Street? This is the, uh, the existing crosswalk is um, right here. Uh, this is the, the fire station yeah. here, and this is the walkway to uh, the senior, yeah. the senior station. <coughs> the plan was to put it up here. And I had a problem with that. Has that been uh, resolved? That no, uh, uh, no. But I'd like to re restate what my problem is. Um, this is a pretty good place to uh, cross here. This pla yeah. this area here to cross is there's a decent sized slope coming yeah. uh, from the west, 
And cars coming down there may not give the pass uh, the uh, pedestrians enough time to jump across. They won't see the cars uh, in time, and they'll get caught out there. Whereas here, you've got more time to tell if there's a car coming at you. And yep. uh, you can wait. So I'm, I want that we, taken into consideration. Uh, so I am taking a note about that, John. It is a specific agenda item okay. in the future. Oh. Yeah, okay, but thank you. Anybody else on the parking, parking flow? Yes. I only have what? My name is John Gardner, and I'm Sean's neighbor at Four Summer Street. And no one knows more about this piece of land than I do because I have a perfect view out my back window. Um, uh, it's going to be hard for me to restrain just the parking and related. There's a lot of other What's stuff. What's your address, John? For Summer Street. For Summer Street, okay. Yes. Uh, the, my first question about the proposed underground parking would be, does it do anything to the height of the building? There, it already is at maximum, as I understand it. It can't change. So they've got to dig deep in order to do that. I would suggest that there's a, that potentially this is whether they dig a trench or not. The water flow in that area, that whole piece of land, goes from goes across to the northeast corner. Yeah. And I believe there's a catch basin or something shown here. That would, all the water goes there. I challenge anybody after the meeting to come to my house and watch it rain, and watch all the water from Summer Street, which comes down my driveway across my backyard we are definitely going to talk about that okay. at, a, at a separate time but okay but I would question does making the additional parking under the building become even a bigger nightmare now of flooding of any, so just any show us just show us where the the flow of water is as, as you can see it the, the, water, the, I the think flow the, of water you say if there's a big rain event it's sent it down from Main Street actually the water comes at my house here <laughs> the water comes, it starts with Paul Phipps' land. Yep. Because the whole piece goes down towards this corner. Yep. Comes down my driveway, comes down Sean's driveway. I've got a beginning of a Grand Canyon here where it, it comes off the road. Okay. Most of it is road water. It is melting. The flow is down, Summer Street's here. The flow of water is down this way. Okay. It actually goes down. But if everything's targeting here, if you look at this terrain, one of the houses for the um, housing authority is right here. And this is some giant pipe that would take it away from the land. I think this is a major problem. For the parking flow and the parking. Exactly. Okay, okay, Excuse fair enough. Yes. So a little illustration how all the issues are all tied together. Okay. So I uh, have that as a comment. Um, in terms of the traffic, I would just, several of you folks were pushing on the agenda. It's really important to, to at least consider worst case scenario, if this is the location of the new pot shop in Hopkinton, there's going to be tremendous impact. But what, what is there commercially is of tremendous significance in terms of an acceptable plan for parking. The, I, I, I walked in tonight to a new plan, the, the under building parking. Before that was an issue, there was, it was, by my calculation, using their numbers, there were going to need to be 30 slots on the main street to accommodate, at peak time, the cars that would be there. So it changes some, certainly, by doing on-site underground parking. Yeah. But I would caution, if you get a 60-seat restaurant, that you get flow all at once, and you get the change of flow. You get people, the restaurant's busy on a Saturday night, you got to flow to manage outside. I would argue that even with the additional slots, there's still the potential of needing far more parking spots. And you said earlier, people want to park where they want to park, so the, the focus is the heat's going to be on those parking places. Around. There are precious few along the main street. Yeah. And I could do just leave the open question, where do all these cars go? Well, if the business is, is as successful as the owner would hope, 
then I think that it increases the level of problem. Right. right. And that's a major, major factor. I, I, right. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to stop there. I would just editorialize that I think what you're wrestling with is a problem. You've got a, you've got a size 10 building on a size 5 lot. And I think the struggle is going to be there's an awful lot to, to accommodate, much of it mixed, mixed purpose. And I think, it's, I think as proposed, it's a nightmare and it has the potential to be a nightmare long after it's built. So. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Peter Hilberg. I live at 78 Main Street. And I obviously have lots of things to say, but I will save that when it's more appropriate. Regarding this particular topic, uh, two things. One, I certainly concur with John Palmer. Um, living on Main Street and being outside at times, I see motorists do a lot of stupid things when ambulances and fire trucks are trying to get in and out of the firehouse. Uh, having all these cars here will only add to the chaos of what's happening when we're trying to move emergency vehicles, not necessarily onto the property, but just out of the firehouse onto Main Street. Um, and as an emergency physician who works at Metro West Medical Center, that's a concern for the health and welfare of the town when minutes and even seconds make a difference. And to think that some accident would happen out in front of the firehouse just when uh, an ambulance is trying to move out, it would really impede the flow of the, any kind of emergency vehicle. Secondly, regard to this parking, I'm just looking at some of the numbers here and I'm curious how the appropriate parking numbers have come up. Um, first of all, does the 9646 retail space, four spaces per thousand square foot, does that include just the customers of the retail space or does that include the employees of the retail space as well? So I don't know the answer to that, but I assume that it's in there, but we can ask that question. The other thing is with regards to the uh, restaurant, one space for two employees. I doubt that you'll have husband and wife working at the restaurant. I doubt that you'll have people carpooling. Everybody has their own car. They all drive to the place where they work. So I can't imagine how one space for two employees is accurate. I assume part of that is that they're not all working at the same time. Okay. Um, and then as far as the one bedroom uh, apartments, one space per bedroom. The builder has said that he's trying to do this for older couples. Uh, even if you're an older couple, typically if you're living in one bedroom and it's two people, you're gonna have two cars. Even if you're a young couple trying to save money and it's a couple together in one bedroom, you'll have two cars. So I, I think that everybody said that the parking is crowded. I think that based upon the calculations, they may not be totally <laughs> accurate and it's gonna be even more crowded than what we anticipate. That's all I have to say for now. Okay, thank you. Anybody else from the public on this particular issue? So I think I covered everything almost, but I'm just gonna, the, the downtown quarter is supposed to be putting um, a set of traffic lights for, that's gonna assist the public safety buildings. So I don't know what the final engineering looks like or how it solves for it. But I certainly hope that they incorporate existing and new and whatever flow may be. So just that's something in this hearing, you hear that, that it, it is slated to uh, assist us with some of this traffic control. So hopefully, if this comes to fruition, they will look at this driveway like it will look at our neighbor and some of the others. So yeah. Just a, a comment, and if we can influence that, I've been trying to influence that from my side. Well, I was, I was going to ask you, I mean, have you been promised some sort of improvement because when I, I mean I only looked at the data a little bit it looked like it took a very lousy intersection to slightly less lousy um, so I I mean does the traffic control light that they promised so far oh so okay the, the thank you 
from yes, the so you will be able to control the traffic light. Exactly. I got Thank you. Buildings. Okay, that makes sense to yeah, me. Yeah, so, so that we can yep. make sure that it kind of looks at this area because, yep. you know, right, the testimony is true. It's downtown is challenging. So I hope right. that they take this right. project in with whatever it may face here. So. <laughs> Could you have a time frame on that? Next, I think it's a year from now they're projecting. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's who, summer who they project in the well state. Here. <laughs> we'll be going out to bid, so. Okay. It's slated for 2020. Yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> it's slated for going to bid in 2020? It's on the state um, improvement plan money for 2020. Yes, for 2020. Okay, so start. So start to, so going out to bid and initiating in 2020. Correct. Okay. And just maybe a couple of the public comments that I can, um, the impact to Main Street, um, if I have an emergency on Main Street, just many of the buildings are challenging and I would just shut down Main Street. So I kind of always let everybody know that if I'm in that situation. Yeah. And it inconveniences people, but that's the action I do when I have to do that in several areas. I mm -hmm. was at a building this week and I shut down Main Street while I figured out whether I had a fire or not. So okay. it's just that's the way I have to deal with that issue. Okay. Um, it's not the perfect scenario, but it's I do have to face that quite often and that's what the solution is. Okay. And then just kind of a follow-up on the parking. I think I presented you a fair statement on sweat path analysis, mm -hmm. but there's still a little more. There's a drawing here that's been presented, and I would just vet it, vet it further. I have not seen yes. the formal solution, so that's kind of that's has to take place in code from compliance. Yep. And I just want you to know yep. I haven't seen that it truly meets it all. I'll take the architect right. for his work, and I would check on that oncoming traffic piece. So I think that's all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Um, we are nearing the nine o'clock uh, bell. So we have a few more minutes we can keep talking, but what is our schedule for the next meeting? So we have the continuing hearings for Whisper Way. Uh, for Wilson Street uh, for access to the solar farm. 9 o'clock, uh, continue public hearing from Dr. Wow. Um, okay. 7.30 we have what? 7.30 is Whisper Way. Whisper Way. And then what's the next time? The next. Just run that through really quickly. I'm sorry. So at 7.30, continue public hearing for Whisper Way. Yep. Okay. So 8.45 senior code, given yep. 15 minutes, <laughs> and 9 o'clock continuing public hearing from Buckland Street, the Wall Street development. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Um, Do you think we're going to go? That's the question. <clears throat> you have to assume that they are at this point. Let's start. 9.30. Um, I'm just looking at this and just looking at the reality that we lose two board members following next meeting. Does anybody have a willingness to try and meet for a slightly longer meeting? I will definitely end at 10, I promise. <laughs> but to start um, earlier at 7 or even 6.30 one time, one more time. On which date are you? It is, what's the 15th. date? May 15th. 13th. 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 Thank you. 13th. So, how many meetings do we have before the board turns over to? Who does one more? This is it. One more. This, this one and one more. Yeah. I'm not feeling like we could close this out and vote on it within another Next meeting. meeting? So, I mean, not necessarily the question, but thank you. Yeah, I'm available to, to meet on the 13th early. Uh, I, I don't there. disagree with you. I'm just giving it a shot if yeah. it works. May 13th, any, are people willing to come at 6.30? I cannot. You cannot. What time can you get here? Seven at best. Seven at best. Um, 6.30 is very tight for me too. Uh, All right, that's fair. Um, and we want to maintain people's ability to vote. Um, so seven o'clock? Seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. Okay.
Thank you. That just give us a half hour. Or? Well, it does give us a half an hour unless um, anything else um, either ends, pushes out, and or continues or whatever. So it's about the best we can do at this rate with what we know. I want to mention, remind that we have a site walk for this in between. Oh, yes, yes. Saturday. Saturday. thank you. And, and I am Saturday. this Saturday at 8. eight. Mm -hmm. um, and I am sheepishly admitting that I am not going to be there. I can't be there. So. I'm sorry, you I do? Cannot. Who's going to be there? One, two, three, four. Okay. Um, but I will commit to going out. Um, and I mean, I, I know the spot, but I'll walk around it for sure. Um, I, I apologize. I will, too. I will too. I apologize as well. I'm going to be out of town. All right. So maybe I'll take Paula up on that cup of coffee and we'll walk, we'll walk the site. Um, okay, but there is a site walk at 8 o'clock on this Saturday. The public is invited to attend. Site walks are not public hearings, so it's not the time. It's certainly the time to have conversations and potentially ask questions. It's not the time to uh, contemplate that actual any kind of um, decisions are being made or testimony is being taken. Um, all of that has to happen in the context of a public hearing in this room. Question for the chair. Mm -hmm. um, I hadn't considered this before it was recommended tonight, um, but the mirroring, moving the building more to the uh, east side of the lot, um, I think that deserves some consideration. And I know that they would need time to work up plans to do that if, if that's something we were interested in hearing. Um, so if they did do something like that, it would be after the election anyway. So maybe that's a moot point. I'm just I don't know. It's, it's worth saying that it's an interesting concept. And it's up to them, uh, the developer, to, to uh, tee that up or not. But it, it is interesting because there's no, you know, there's no residence on that side of the parking lot. And I know. I was thinking from a historical standpoint, that's where the current historical building is, and that would be good continuity. But well, it's something to think the about. The historical thing is a up whole different can of worms. Yeah. Through the chair related to the site walk. Yes. Uh, can we ask the applicant how many uh, representatives will be there? Uh, I will, yeah. Who's going to be there? Everybody. Um, pretty much everybody. Okay. Yeah. Engineers. Yeah. Is there someone Usually. specific you're looking to? No, no, I just wanted to yeah. make sure we From have a past experience, it's quite a party out there. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, but I definitely, I, I recommend people come. I think it's a different way of seeing it. It always helps me. I am sorry I'm not going to be there. I am going to make a point of going um, and tromping around. And I may really ask somebody to just do, do that with me. Um, because it really does make a difference to see exactly where you're situating something and, and, uh, and contemplate the scale and, you know, think in a practical, a practical way about how it is going to uh, look. look there. And also just, you know, you know, look out and see, you know, most of us drive through there all the time and understand the challenges, but to, you know, stand in space and watch the traffic. It'll still be an early Saturday morning, but to understand exactly where you are and what the what the concerns are is helpful. Through the chair? Yes. We, since there was, I believe, four that cannot make it, <clears throat> could I suggest uh, scheduling a second one the following Saturday? Um, Casual one? Or changing it? And I'm not changing it. Then you'll probably have the same situation. Um, so what is, I'm sorry, what is this Saturday's date? 27th. 27th. Um, and the next Saturday would be what, May 4th? 4th. Oh. Um, I can go on the 4th, I don't know. I mean, we could, are, could somebody from your team meet me on the 4th if other people could go on the 4th? Uh, I mean, yeah, I can try. you can go on the 4th? I should be able to be there this Saturday, so I would be the 5th, but I mean, it's a parking lot with existing businesses now. I mean, I, I, it seems like if people wanted to stop by at another point in time, they they definitely can. They, they can. Yeah. I mean, it's it, not it, like it's a access issue or a safety issue or something if people no, want to agree. Well, there is concerns about the storm water though, so that would be important to point out. There's concerns about the storm water, so that would be important to get input from All the right. neighbors. So is anybody else wanting to add, to join Mary and I on the 4th? I can so if, if one person can walk, uh, just be there to answer questions on the 4th, too, that's really helpful. Okay. Eight. Is eight? Yeah. 
That's fine. Make a motion for that? <laughs> I don't think we do. We you don't, don't need sidewalk? Well. You don't need, okay, cool. Well, so, uh, well, more than four we're just scheduling it. Oh, it has to be, it should be posted just in case. Yeah. Yeah, it should be posted just in case. Not as a meeting, but as. Just as a, a gathering of the planning board. Yeah, we probably won't have a quorum, but that's a good point to make mm -hmm. sure we're posted. Thank you. Yeah. That it's no deliberations, no discussion. Just right. Observing yeah. Right. Yes. Right. <coughs> no deliberations. Is not the normal sidewalk criteria? It is. It is right. normal. Right. That is the normal <coughs> for sidewalk. Um, it's always a challenge to maintain that that <laughs> scenario, but um, all deliberation and all discussion has to happen in the context of the meeting. So the hour being nine o'clock. Um, I will entertain a motion to continue this public hearing to 7 p.m. on May 13th. Sure. Second. Second. Discussion before, before yep. we vote. Um, do we have other stuff at 9? Can we keep going on this? Or is we it have just... a lot of stuff. Right. <laughs> Thank you. <Check> it. <laughs> we have so much stuff. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, awesome, thank you. So on to that stuff. Look, Brian, you can sign another month or so. What's that? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> and a sidewalk. And a sidewalk. <laughs> All right. They go to two sidewalks. All righty, can, oh, yes. can we do the executive, executive session minutes first so we get that done? Look at this. Look at how this. Well, what's really, whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. So process-wise, we take a few minutes to read these and then just vote them. Then you get, then you, so what you do is you get, what the nice thing about flipping it is that you get a longer distance to make that. And so then you can use the loop. Elaine, are you collecting these? Yeah, I remember you caught up with uh, town attorney as needed. What's that? You got, you got yes, we met separately. We met separately. copies have to go back to Elaine when you're yeah. done reading them? Hey, I added it to my photographic memory. Nice. <laughs> nice. I think I remember the first We're not going to be able to do it without your photographic memory. You're going to have to stand on for another sentence. I mean, turn. <laughs> 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 All right. I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the executive session for Monday, April 22nd, held at 7 p.m. at the Town Hall, room 211. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Careful. <coughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Yes, Mary. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Okay. Sorry, Mary. I didn't know she wasn't here. 
All right. A motion that the minutes be made public. Huh? A motion that the minutes be made public. I was going to ask what the process would be for that. Uh, when the reason for them being uh, executive session and uh, confidential is gone, then you can release them. But until then, um, they're not to be released. So it's not ready for release. So will town council notify us when, when, right. when the reason is? In a month or so. Okay. Do they typically, does, does town council typically notify us on those things? Does, do, do they typically notify us or do we just kind of keep it on a, we'll just ask. Okay. Thanks, Elaine. Because I agree um, with Frank, I'd like them to be released as soon as they can be. So Mary, I'm sorry, I took the motion and the vote before looking to the left, but it was a successful enterprise. <laughs> okay. That's fine. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Um, I'll entertain a motion on the minutes of uh, March 25th. I did suggest a correction um, in, in the detail on the TJ Solar, um, my comment on the conditions that were written for screening on somebody's property were about di directed to Mr. Shambo versus Ms. Hanowich, and that was swapped around, but I, I corrected, gave that correction to Kobe. Is there a motion? On the minutes? Move to approve. As corrected? As, amended. as, as corrected amended. by Miriam? Or as amended, yep. Sure. Um, Second. Sec okay. Any discussion? Do you need to each um, All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Um, we have an approval not required plan we could probably do. So <laughs> here it is. Do we have um, Barry Smith? No, not, Barry Smith. not Barry Smith. Somebody in Barry Smith's place. Thereabouts. Yes. I'm uh, Rich Leslie. I'm with Bay Colony Group. And okay. uh, we actually prepare this in our plan for Eversource Energy okay. in Barry Smith. Okay. So what this is, is this parcel is shown as uh, parcel five on a plan that was done by J.D. Marketing in November of 1994. And Barry Smith is selling off, that's a, it was a, 50, a little over 55 acre parcel, or is, and Barry Smith is selling off 21.3 acres to Eversource and retaining the rest of it. The parcel is it's situated on Wilson Street. It's right between Wilson and Cedar. So it's on the east side of Wilson. Or the, I'm sorry, the west side of Wilson, the east side of Cedar Street. There's a mill up there yeah. at 29. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then on the back side on Cedar Street, he has his uh, landscaping business. Okay. The, the uh, state forests are north of it. So there's, there's the um, Eversource plant on the north. And then you have the Hopkinton State Forest, Super. which also backs up to Cedar Street. And yeah. so. And what we're doing is just proposing cut to sell to 21.3 acres. Okay. Question? Thank you. Through the chair, for clarification, this contains uh, a private home and the business. On this parcel, no. though, were, there were five parcels in, in, back in 1994. Um, one of them was 27, which was a residential. The other one's 20, 27 Cedar or 27 Wilson? 27 Wilson, 29 Cedars, the sawmill. And then on the, I'm sorry, 29 Wilson, this is Sawhill. Okay. And then on the back side, I don't know the address off the top of my head, the Cedar Street. That's a different. That's lot. the oh. same guy owned all the land and broke it up. Those. Because when you described it as end to end, I, that's. How yeah, I, it, it, actually. It, yeah. Yeah. That's up on the screen, actually. Yeah. Okay. Just a question through the chair. What lot is in question here? So, see where it says 5A and 5B, all of that together, all of that 5A and 5B is just this lot five on the previous plan. Okay. okay. So, 5A, 21.3 acres, being conveyed to Eversource, and 5B remains with Eversmith. Okay. Okay. I see it. I got it. I got it. Yeah. Oh, I thought there was, two, all right, I thought there were two five Bs. No, I was just trying to show you that it extends up above those buildings. As you can see, Barry's the land around there as well. We would read up under Woodbridge. 
through, through the chair, does that include the old um, quarry? Do you, do you know? No. No, our, our site is just a, it's a completely void site. Okay. Is the quarry on current Eversource property? I'm not sure. That's why I was curious. Do you know? I never Um, any other questions? It, yes. Just additional information, but does the Cedar Street lot, which I can't read exactly, is that where the other private home is? Or is that further? No, north? no, the private home is, well, there is a house on Cedar Street lot as well. And out back of the house is where he does his landscaping. Right, All right okay. And then he's still keeping that? Yes. The, the that's the wedge? Yes, yep, yep. that's a wedge to the top. Right yep. on Street. Okay. Just to the point of the quarry, the quarry is owned by LNG, the LNG plant. It is. Yeah, yeah. and I the um, so. just to not to confuse it with the Hopkinton sand pit, where they get the sand for the, which is yes. on. The just a question. There's nobody. There's no representative from LNG here, correct? No. No. Yeah, so I, we have, I, I'm working for them. So do we? And any idea what that additional land is going to be used for? I have no idea. I was given sketches to prepare a plan. Understood. Did you have a question, Carol? I saw hand. No. This way. No I guess my only question would be for our planning staff if there's any additional input that we should consider. I don't think so. No. It meets the requirements of the ANR. ANR. Straight up. Is that your Yes. It is. All right. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve uh, the ANR for zero Wilson Street. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Yeah. Will we sign? Bring it over. Two. 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 Carol. Me and you. Last official <laughs> Might be the last one. Carol and Fran. There we go. Get it done. <laughs> Frankly, I'm going to be glad to be rid of them. Oh, did I say that out <laughs> loud? <laughs> yeah, you guys are going to have to come back. You're going to be like Emeritus. Is it 522? 422. 422. Throw things at us. <laughs> Actually, Fran's going to be back there with his watch. <laughs> right. So really, there's one more meeting. Yeah. One more meeting. All right. So um, I'm going to try and kick off one more easy one. We need to pick a social date to <laughs> post to have dinner and drinks or drinks or something to say thank you to Fran and Carol. So um, right, Fran has some dates to contact for us to contemplate. And then Carol will have to go second. So the week of the 13th, since it's our last meeting, if there's any days the, the 14th, 15th, or 16th. If I don't know if any of you are traveling, Gary. Do those work for you? Do those work? Okay, those are fine. Okay. How about you, Mary? It looks like Thursday night. Um, I'm busy. But Tuesday and Wednesday are fine that week. All right. All right. How about you, Gary? Wednesday's best for me. But okay. I can make it even more. Wednesday's best for me. I have plans Wednesday's the other two. Best. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't have an issue with Tuesday. With but Wednesday works? Yeah, Wednesday works. This is kind of like doing the Secret Santa at the Kramer residence. Are you going to make it the whole way around the team? I believe Tuesday is going to be the best for me, but I might, I have to double check my flight. I, I might be Definitely able to. double check. I left my phone in the car rushing, but I'm thinking Wednesday would be best for me, too. Wednesday, okay. Wednesday looks to be the big winner, Deb. Okay, I'll double, oh, sweaty palms. I'll, yeah. I'll figure it out. Let me double check. What time? So, uh, what, what time works? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty flex. 6.30? Shall we do dinner? Sure. Sure, sure. yeah. All right, shall we do dinner at I'm, TJ's? You can ask. I'll meet you guys. I won't be there. You won't be there. No, I've, my son's graduation. Week. Oh, your son's graduation. Well, I'll be in New Orleans, though. 
So, <laughs> but I'll think of you guys. All right, we'll miss you. As long as, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no, but maybe I'll get a rain check. We could we could do this again. <laughs> we could do it again. Are you guys telling me we're talking? Oh, we're extending the invitation to the left. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. You guys should come. To the left. Location. Okay, awesome. Wednesday the 15th at 6.30. Shall we do TJ's because they have a big space? We can, we can do that back room there. Yeah. Well, we can ask him if we can do the back room, but I got connections, so. Oh. Just, just do that. All right. TJ's. All right. I can make it. Yeah. Oh. 2.40 Thursday. Yes, awesome. I can make awesome. it. Yeah. 15th. All right. Just had a little bit. You know, I probably should out. check my phone. <laughs> <laughs> just, just in case. All right, yeah. but I better write it in there. I think it's going to be true that I'm going to change my plans if I have some plans on the 15th. Because I didn't yeah, think I did, fun. but I'm going to check. Do we know where we're doing um, it? TJ's. Okay. You'll be on a cruise. Yeah, I feel like that's where instead. you're going to be. <laughs> No yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yep. No. I am definitely free. Thank goodness. Um. So 6:30 p.m. TJ's. Will you post that for us? It has, to be it has to be posted. It does. Yeah. It does. The public's but, welcome. But I. Yes. The public is welcome. <laughs> um, and whether there'll be a small amount, no, probably no talking of business. Yes. But. <laughs> okay. That's okay, we'll do session. some minutes. They will be very cursory. <laughs> okay. After or before drinks. Right. Um, okay, right. perfect. And um, and definitely, you, everybody, everybody's welcome. Staff is welcome. So. Yes. Okay, so. perfect. That was actually easier than I expected it to be. For Elaine, technically, if we're on the Hopkinson side of TJ's. Doesn't matter where you are. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It has to be a, an accessible building. Check. <laughs> it has to be posted. Oh, I know it all the rules. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it has a loop around drive. This, this, <laughs> by the way, this is a first for me. I've been in town politics for, a, you know, a minute. It's over 20 and This is the first time I have posted a meeting at TJ's. <laughs> Just saying. Um. <laughs> All right, I'm just putting it in my calendar so I don't forget. And I will take the action item to call TJ's. Let's see if we can get that. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, okay, look at that. Easy peasy. Um, so, can we? We talked about the um, citizens. The, the growth study situation. Um, somebody, we did not set a time to talk about it again. Um, we just heard how busy the, uh, oh actually we don't meet again before town meeting anyway. No. Right? No. Town meeting um, okay. So that, that so particular. We don't meet before town meeting? Oh, so. Town yeah, meeting. More meeting after? Yeah, but in the meeting. election, right? Yeah. So no, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is a good time to also uh, make sure we remind the, the public that town me annual town meeting comes up and begins at 7 o'clock on May 6th Six, right. at the middle school auditorium. It hasn't changed. Okay. Middle school auditorium, 7 o'clock, May 6th. Um, and the public is encouraged to attend. All right. Um, so. What day is the election? Sorry, since we're. Uh, yep, no, and the election is the. Is the twentieth? So Monday, not Monday. Monday. Yep. Yeah. We you. have a meeting on the thirteenth, and the election is the following Monday on the twentieth. All day. Thank you. Polls are open seven to eight, I think. Yeah. Look at me go with my public service announcements. Very good. That's very good. Well done. Um, okay. So, um, is there? Look, we should set a time to um, to talk about this at more length. Um, does it make sense? Our next meeting is June 10th. Is that right? After May 13th. Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Hey, guys, let's test our commitment to this idea. Um, is there any enthusiasm for a meeting just to, to talk about structuring this and outlining some priorities um, and, and crafting a proposal. There is on my part, let me just say that. I think that 
So if it's not going to be a three-hour meeting, right? <laughs> no, exactly. Shorter one. I mean, yeah. could it be a subcommittee where we wouldn't have to have a. I, I am also amenable to a subcommittee. A uh, subcommittee has to post, mm -hmm. has to be in a public place that's accessible, and has to keep minutes. Mm -hmm. But an open meeting law applies to subcommittees. I'm I would with having a separate meeting. A separate meeting. Yeah, I Me think too. that's the best way to do it. Me too. So we have enough time to discuss it. Um, okay, so let's get out our little calendars again, everybody. Here we go. Um, so we go to TJ's on Wednesday. Yeah, I see that couple of years. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> great. <laughs> um, but seriously, <laughs> um, anybody have any suggestions? The fourteenth, the Tuesday, that Tuesday. The fourteenth. That's before Fran leaves. I think the 14th, that's fourteenth. The awesome. sure. <laughs> Wrote me in for one more. <laughs> My only caution there is that means we have. Planning board activities Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday. But Wednesday. some people said yeah, Tuesday didn't work, right? Yeah, the trails committee meeting. Uh, yeah. Nice. Ooh. Awesome. Well, this is for a subcommittee, so not everybody. No, well, we did. So he, we didn't decide to do a subcommittee necessarily. Oh. Okay. So we could still separate. do it. Separate meeting. I think it might be better to do after the election so we can get the input of our new members, too. There you go. Whoever they may be. not terrible. Um, <laughs> so they get I mean, if we do it after the election, we can have our two new members also give input. Then Frank can petition to be a citizen at large. <laughs> what? Come back in full circle. <laughs> Just in case you miss us. So, I love that idea. Actually, Fran and Carol. I'm getting flashes. <laughs> okay. Um, what could we do June 3rd, maybe? June 3rd. What's on June 3rd, anybody? State convention. What? Saturday is last year. June 3rd is a Monday, right? Yeah. Zach meeting. Mm. Zach. Mm. Do you have Zach on, on every Saturday alternate Saturday Monday? Our meeting's the 10th. How about Wednesday worked? How about June 5th? It's okay with me. How about Fine. the following week? <laughs> That's after our next meeting, which is okay, June 12th? Yeah, that'd be better for me. It's okay for me. Double Aaron? meetings that week. Works. Okay. Um, so that's, yes, yeah, two planning board events. It's going to be a good week. Three meetings for me. Three so we meetings. can't do it May 22nd? Back to May 22nd. I cannot touch oh, that. Oh, senior dinner. Okay. Senior dinner. Okay. Sorry. Yep. I'll see you there. <laughs> quorum? Do I have a quorum? Nope. I don't think so. Um, uh, the 21st, it's a Tuesday. Design review. Okay. I'm on vacation. 27 is probably Memorial Day, right? Yep. Yeah. 28. Oh, I suppose so we to have one planning board meeting off that day. Yeah, he's um, how about the 29th? Yeah. That's May. Because That'd be May. good. Because we don't have a planning board meeting that week, right? So, we only have one next month. Right. 29th yes, is a grade that's, eight concert. That's <laughs> an option. Grade eight concert. At a, okay. At a, that's just me, maybe. Um, what time is it? Seven. It's at seven. Yeah. They don't last very long, but um, so I could come after. So if we met at eight? Yeah. Yeah, because I might finish by 8.15 or something. Yeah. Or 8.30? I mean, if it's going to be a one-hour thing, 8.30 to 9.30? I want you to be there. Yeah, but if I came a few minutes late, it, it's okay. I think so. Well, right, so 8 o'clock on uh, the 29th? 8 o'clock? Mm -hmm. If it matters, uh, I might, may or may not be able to make that one. You know, you're just new to us here and already causing problems. <laughs> um, I think that that's fine, actually. Um, it, I would appreciate your ability to be there if you can, but I don't think that it's critical if, if you're not able to be there. I appreciate knowing that, though. In his defense, he just threw out 20 different dates, and that's the first one he said. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe he was being quiet until so just saved it until we settled on a date. So, um, where is there is there an opportunity to know where we might meet in this building? Do, is it is the 29th at eight? I was on April or May. May. 
the seniors will be on their boat cruise. It doesn't involve us. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, okay. 29th at 8. At the senior center. Wait, what's what's open? It looks open. Uh, here, the oh, anywhere? Are here. Oh, so we can meet here. Awesome. Thank you. So, um, so May 29th at 8 o'clock in this room to talk about structuring um, a multi-stakeholder growth task growth force task force thing yes. okay awesome thank you so logistically should we invite our school days on and uh, who else DPW fire chief I think this was just to set up the parameters, if, if I understood correctly. Yeah, I mean, it's an open meeting, so yeah. I would, I, I almost think that it's not a terrible idea to invite our liaison, for sure. Um, it's an open meeting. Anybody would be welcome to come, and we would take people's um, participation as a plus. Um, but I don't, we don't really know what we're doing yet, so I think that I wouldn't necessarily invite everybody formally. Framework, then build up. Hmm? Okay. Frame it, and then build. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have we we have progress on that one. We can ask him. Um, now we have the um, the discussion. The only open discussion I think for um, our zoning articles is the Osmond one for the affordable housing age restriction. Right? Is that true? Everything else is settled. Okay. But, but it's good to talk about our presentation at town meeting, too, if we have time. It is. I almost think that that is something that might be worked on offline and then brought back for everybody to weigh in on. Okay. I'm just going to suggest that because of any time. time. Yeah. Yeah. So Fran and I will do that. Yes. That would be great. Happy to sit down. Um, I, I just think we're going to run out of time That's fine. to do that, but I definitely want to bring it back to the group. All right, so about the Osmod, Carol has some um, feedback that she would like us to contemplate. I actually uh, spent quite a bit of time thinking about this over the weekend, um, and I gave you all a little print out of my thoughts and the rationale that got me there. I think our purpose here in looking at the Oswood and what we decide to do as far as the question that's before us is based on the fact that when the Osmond change happened, it was looking for senior housing, affordable housing, and housing that restricted to have no people under 18 years of age. Because of um, the rule from HCD, we can't do all three of those things. So I think our purpose here is to find the thing, find the solution that most closely meets town meetings desires and needs. My personal opinion, after looking at it, I think we need to maintain the affordable housing piece. It's 18, 18 units. We're not in a position where as a town we're going to build those units. There's um, and I presume, because I typed this, you all read exactly what I said, so I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. Um, there, the Osmood in the host community agreement has, has a payment if there are school children involved. We're not going to get that anywhere else if we did, in fact, build housing units to make up for these 18 units that we're not doing. <coughs> If we lose our hold on affordable housing, then we're faced with 40B developments and a whole slew of other things that I don't think is really in the town's best interest. I think the affordable component was the most, is the most important portion of this housing um, thing. And I will tell you that I did wander around Chamberlain Street over the weekend and talk to some people on Chamberlain Street who have been there for a long time. And in their recollection, there have been three Sanctu people. Sanctuary Lane, right? I'm sorry, Sanctuary Lane. Yep. Under the age of 18, and one was an infant, was there for a short period of time. And then there were two school-aged children over the course of their time in the uh, development. And those children were not there for the entire school career. They were there for a year or two. 
So I don't think the impact of children is going to be a big impact, and I really think we need to preserve the affordable housing component, most importantly. So my understanding, so I had the opportunity <laughs> to, to speak at length with Carol twice. <laughs> um, and I, I just want to say that, um, so it was my initiative to sort of uh, to tee up uh, removing the uh, or maintaining the under 18 age restriction and um, contemplating affordable housing either done by the developer offsite or the the um, payment in lieu um, and as I thought about it with Carol it, it occurs to me and I don't know if it was an obvious point to everybody um, at the meeting but if we do have off-site affordable housing, which presumably is attractive, um, it can't be age-restricted, and we will get more children without any um, cash benefit. And I don't know that that I I think that I was I'm definitely focused on the affordable housing. I, we we found ourselves sort of in violent agreement that the affordable housing is a key component to maintain. Um, if we do develop, if we ask the developer to develop uh, or, or repurpose units um, elsewhere in town, there is no, there is no um, benefit or, uh, or compensation for additional school children. Um, so I thought that it would, I had not seen it that whole way and I thought that it was worth bringing back to make sure we had the completer discussion. Um, and uh, I definitely think that we still need to have an agreed upon approach going to town meeting. Um, but I, I thought it was worth at least inviting this board to contemplate um, Carol's cogent argument that I had not seen the whole way when we talked about it last time. Question through the yes. chair, maybe goes back to Carol. <laughs> is if we were to kind of go on the uh, the proposal that we retain the affordable housing inventory, as yeah. you suggest, what is the impact of that? Um, either a financial impact or uh, other types of impact. Is that kind of like metered out anywhere? And maybe I'm read maybe it's there, Carol. I just haven't read it through. Is well, from my perspective, the only financial impact that there would be is is if there are children, school-aged children in the development, um, there would be that financial impact. But that's offset by the conditions of the host community agreement. If you don't maintain the affordable housing inventory that we have and you get down below and then you get to 40 the, B. the level, then we're looking at 40 Bs. And to build it elsewhere, which I mentioned in my my little dissertation here, I don't think a payment in lieu would pay the town enough to buy the property and build a unit on for the units that we need. Yeah. We've definitely had that discussion before, and I'm not a huge fan of the payment in lieu of um, either. I, I wanted to, I'm putting in times, I, I apologize for having my phone up, but now that we scheduled things, I want to make sure I remember to arrive. Um, uh, I think that we face a really interesting uh, situation here where we all have ownership in in the um, in the confusion right every all of our attorneys should have might have helped us out before we got into this fix um, but uh, we did permit in this case we did permit that development um, with the age restriction on both sides mm -hmm. somebody has to be over 55 and nobody can be under under 18 um, and we did permit it um, mandating the affordable housing and now we find ourselves unable to satisfy both sides of that um, I feel like it, you know I, I know other uh, apparently other towns are facing it too I wonder why it wasn't caught even by the Attorney General because it seems like a big thing but I don't know I don't know it, just a point of clarity for in yeah. um, Carol's dissertation, as she suggested. Mm -hmm. The first one, retain, retain the affordable housing, that's and remove the under 18 restriction, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. And both 
both options are keeping the over 55? Yes. Okay. Yeah. One so one we're essentially other. entertaining going back to where we were uh, last week before we got rid of the the um, the other 18. I just want to have, have the more the, the more full discussion, and I hope yeah, I know we were really fine. tired when we were talking about it last mm -hmm. time. Well, I was again asleep. Gary. Um, through the chair, I just have a, a comment and, and, a, and a question, um, and I, I agree with a lot of what Carol has said. I think that 40 Bs um, are um, particularly challenging for us, and I'd also argue that the most recent 40 B we've had in town has also put, aside from even enrollment numbers, has put a tremendous burden on our schools as well, um, you know, just even talking in, informally with some of the, the school administrators about, um, you know, just a, how that's changed their role in terms of, um, you know, just a, 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 just, just had, a, had an impact in, 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 in what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so I agree, and I think that, that one of the best things we can do is if we can <coughs> avoid the likelihood of a 40B and we can continue to have some form of, of influence over what's built and what's proposed, I, I think that's really important to us. Um, my question is, I'm just curious if there's a reason that, that we select 55 as the age. And, and I guess I'm just thinking of, like, is there another creative option if we said, um, and I don't even know if this would be even be amenable to the to the developers, um, but if we said 60 and older, and again, while that may not, I mean, it just if we raise that bar a little bit, then then maybe that's a little bit of additional protection to reduce the likelihood of um, school age children living there. I don't even know if that's a. I don't think that's option. within the four corners. Actually, I think that bumps us up out of what we posted on the warrant. And they, I think the developers have already had a ton of marketing material printed, and that's no. I I think there's a lot of content uh, implications for sure. Yeah. I'm not even sure we can think about that right. at this point because it's an expansion of what we posted on the warrant. Okay. That's um, my thought. Know. Might be a worthwhile discussion going forward. If it ma if it makes a difference, and that would be I, I feel like that's a consultant question, right? I would would. What, what that feels like to me, and it's not a terrible idea, is, is that we're, we're trying to work a problem, but we don't necessarily have the, the information, the professional expertise to know if that solves it for us. Question, yeah. Clarity. Don't we have the same language in other districts other than Osmod? The same language for the, um, the formula? Um, or the no one under 18? Yeah, both. No, no one under 18 and the affordable housing. So, um, do we have that? No. Just surprised. I didn't think so. We have if the, the age restriction piece of, for no nobody under 18 is the piece we don't have. We have, over we 50 have somebody has right. to be over 55. At least one. Okay. And it's the, it's the 18 statement that's causing okay. the issue. Right. And we do know, I, do, I am mindful and I remember that the developer is really enthusiastic to maintain that, that restriction on the 18. So I'm not dismissing that. I'd be curious in terms of either from the developer or just you know, their perspective on it. Because one of the things I Oh, I'm definitely curious about that, too. I'm not saying well, they're not going to get a chance to talk ever. I'm just... Right. <laughs> don't so misunderstand. I'm very curious. I just, I just wanted to add, I, I do share Carol's concerns that the payment might not be enough to buy land or build units and that we might not actually build units. I think that that's a guarantee. That's my concern all the way. And I brought that yeah. up when we were doing... we For the first time in my recollection, we... Uh, we instituted the, the the thing for the Whalen Chamberlain development where they had to, re, you know, they had to provide the units in town. But it's, but it's a calculation, right? It's it is a calculation. It's not like you don't have a lot of control over that. Can't, we can't require them to refurbish existing units so they wouldn't add to the housing stock, like buy so, small houses. So mm -hmm. we, we might be able to do that and we can encourage them to do that, but that doesn't mean that we won't also have growth in the schools, right? We would necessarily, we would likely. But have if the house already exists, where children could be living there, and it's bought and refurbished, and children could also live in it. Sure. No. Yeah. That seems yeah. like a wash. Yep. Yeah. But it it could also easily be, you know, a house that we would claim from a couple who's lived here for a long time, yeah. and they're considered through the system, and we are. I, by the way, I just want to say it again. I love children. 
<laughs> do we know always, <laughs> always makes me tense when we do this kind of this conversation. Do we know how large Sanctuary Lane is compared to, this is 180 units we're talking about. It's 40 units. 40 units. So they've had three instances in at least 10 years. It has a portable in it. So it, just to, it really scares me, the idea of 180 units that could all have an unlimited number of children. And I know maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't, but there. there. That's our conundrum right, right there. We all understand it, right? So, so from, from your perspective, Amy, we, we take that 180 that we would have some financial balancing f mitigation for, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, or we have 18 outside that we don't. Well, if, if we were to get some kind of compensation, can we make that compensation large enough to compensate us for what really would be the gap? So that if we're getting a fee um, because the Oswood is over 350 children and we're getting a fee for their, for, for their um, affordable housing, can't we request a, a larger portion versus so I, I mean, you know, this is America. We can do, we can ask for anything, but it's, it's. I, I feel like that's unlikely to happen. That's a whole renegotiation of the host community agreement. By the way, would that have to change anyway? The host community agreement do, uh, for any of the solutions that we pick, or if we have, we remove the no nobody under eighteen. Okay, so that that's another that's another layer of the difficulty. But I don't think we can negotiate for more money. And it isn't money that we get for the affordable housing. Um, and I absolutely celebrate the notion that we want to avoid unfriendly 40 Bs. Um, but I think the priority more is that we want to maintain and, and develop and, our, you know, and, and protect and, our affordable housing stock. Mm -hmm. like yeah, the no. argument just feels better for me yeah. that way. I think it's more immediate. I think it's what was planned. I think it's sort of, you know, we have to make the adjust, adjustment for the law. Um, and, and This is definitely know, a microcosm of what's going to happen on town meeting before, for sure. This yeah. is going to be a very <laughs> complicated um, Ask. So regardless of what we decide, will town council have both versions of the wording? So really the question now? tonight, I think, is do we want town council to have both versions as we continue to discuss? Because we got rid of one last last meeting, and that was on me. So the overall article is there, right? It's gone. The so it's not a one encompassing article with three options. No. I see. So, so what is it now? So we can't even talk about the affordable housing? We could ask for it to be put back on. Could someone on the floor of town meeting cha change the award? No, because no, outside of the four corners. But it was there a couple weeks ago. <laughs> it's finalized tomorrow. Um, so I, you know, I, I'm, my, my personal feeling um, is that it is better to maintain what I, in a perfect world, if it was up to me to decide how it would be solved, and it's not an elegant solution, no matter what we do, we would maintain the under 18 restriction because two things because I think that that is what the developer is most interested in maintaining and that was part of the permanent agreement right that's complicated to change I think and I think 180 units um, it, whether or not we think that we'll actually get a lot of children I think it's a very hard sell on town meeting floor um, as well um, and then and then I would personally rather have units replicated around town versus the cash payment because I don't think I honestly don't think the cash payment does us very much but well the cash payment is is by a formula that's a it is by a formula right. as is as as are the units being replicated right there's a formula for that that we use other places in town 
And that's another negotiating point is whether we use the same formula, which I recommend, because I don't recommend having a different formula for the Osmond than for anywhere else in town, but there's an argument to be made that we're Madam problem Chief, solving. I, I have a question for our, our staff. Um, and I'm just wondering if you can give us the most recent numbers you have on what percentage of our housing stock is <coughs> affordable. 14%. 14 percent. Yeah, we have to be at 10 percent, right? 10 percent. And so, so what are the what are the numbers? On? Do you know the numbers on that? I'm just trying to I'm trying to get a sense for for something like this. How, what's that? So we have we have until yes. the next census, right, before it becomes 2020 census. 2020 census. No, it's not that far. Yep. And that's a function of population. So the, so so just from a process perspective, so. So we're going to get, oh, it's actual housing units. So we don't necessarily know, but, but I mean, so 14% of our housing units now are deemed affordable. Right. And that's based on when? That's not based on the last census. Okay. Oh, that is done. Okay. And we don't know how many housing units we have in town. We, get okay. we, we do know now. Um, we estimate what the 2020 census will say. But we don't know for certain until the count is made. Yeah, but that would give us at least an approximation. How, how much effort or work would it take to make that the estimate? The has kept it pretty good. We can look back, I think the last time that was looked at was maybe a year or so ago, I think the board kind of kept it up to date. Um, okay, and, and, and I guess where I'm going is that like, this is yeah. really, really important information yes. for me because right. if, it, if, it, if it shows that we're at you know 12% and they look at numbers and that's a, uh, you know, that means that we're, you know, 48 units over, mm -hmm. then I'm a little less concerned about it than if it shows that we're right. nine units over. Right. And, and I, I mean, I, I mean, I realize we're not going to have that now, but even for town meeting, yep. um, yep. I would really, really like to, to see that estimate. And, and, and even if you give a, a range, I mean, I realize that everyone's always nervous about putting estimates out there, but a plus or minus a range or something like that, that I think could, could help us make a more informed. I mean, did you say it was done a year ago? I'm looking for it. Yeah, so she estimated that we would have 11.18% in 2020. 11 .18. But I'm, I'm curious so is actually how many units, and I'd love to know what the denominator is there. She estimated that we would have 6,500 or 6,585 housing units in 2020. 6,585? And that and that we would have 736 affordable. So 736 and 10% would be seven. It would be 658. <coughs> so we would be about 90 units over, based on that estimate. Mm -hmm. right and this see, one, part, this part, part of the piece. problem, as I see it, with affordable housing is is our our zoning requires that if you build a development, you have to build one affordable for every 10. But no one ever builds 10. They build right. 19 or 29 or so you're, you're <laughs> nine tenths of a house behind. Right. And everybody that comes along does that reduces right. our access in affordable housing. And, we, yeah, and, I, we, and there's attrition too. We lose some. But, right. but, but I also look at it, if we're say 80 units over, then that would mean we need another eight. I'm, I'm just thinking of the math. I mean, that, that, that's a pretty substantial number of additional units we would right. need. Um, to put us at risk. To put us at risk. Right. So my, my question on that, though, is when a developer pays in lieu of an actual unit, is that counted in any way? Right. So no. what you have yeah. here is just the actual number of units. You're sitting on a pile of cash, in theory, that they've kind of contributed to, but we, I don't recall, and most developers tend to do that, right? The majority of developers will put money That's in the kitty. Yeah. That's their preference. That's their preference. We are pushing back against. I get yeah. it, but I mean, the reality of it is we have this money set aside, and when they do that and they build, it actually hurts when they do the census to when you look yes. at the actual number yes. of units, unless you start taking that money and building or yes. buying. Which nobody wants all those units in one place. It, it's better to mix them Chicken in. Yeah, yes. the whole nine yards. Yep. Yes, exactly. So you're actually even a little bit probably more at risk um, at, at some of this. And a task force item might be to Fran's point through the chair. Uh, in the five years that we've been on the board, we haven't spent any money, and it's it's 
on another committee anyways, but... Yeah, I mean, I don't recall very many. Other than the, the, the units that Mr. Mastriani, the, the applicant, is proposing to, I can't recall off the top of my head a whole bunch more of affordable units that have been built on premise where that developer's building. There's been, a, I mean, there, there was a couple, oh, there was one, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're talking, one. yeah. I know. You use one I hand. Know. So I, I definitely think that, um, and I actually would, would take this conversation and make sure we wrap it into our growth conversation, right? There's, Agreed. there is definitely um, purpose behind making sure we have an approach that is protective and sensible and, and, uh, but visionary too, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. we're sitting on as the twenties in the yeah. pot, but yeah, I agree. I definitely see you coming back for that. That's awesome. I love that idea. <laughs> so that's that's the that's the first level of question. Um, the second level of question is um, we did meet and um, and we do have to settle on sort of an approach and a formula and whether it's you know. The hard question is whether it's going to be payment in lieu or reclaiming units or so forth. Um, and I know you guys had your hands up. Do you uh, do you want to come forward now at this point? Yeah. I know Vin come on forward. Vin wants to speak in a moment also. You, you know, I'll come forward if you want. Uh, Roy McDowell, Legacy Farms. Um, if you are in fact contemplating lifting the restriction on the children on the 18 units, um, I know Vin doesn't want to go that route, so, but right now that's illegal, just so we're all clear on that. Right now everything's illegal, Roy. No, but I'm saying that particular just, language, so we're, we're even a, if you a, leave it, it's, you can't. Yeah, we got you, the tiger by the tail, we got okay, it. Okay, so you understand that. Yep. So what I'm hoping is there could be, it's especially a town meeting, but equally as important, this board supporting, is a couple of options. Cash is one of them, you know, whatever the amount is, and the other hopefully is either to acquire units to bring online as affordable or build them it, it, frankly it, hopefully at the at the uh, developer's choice because the way the ordinance or the rule is written now for every nine units of market rate you build the tenth unit has to be an affordable which basically says you can't build your 11th and 12th <coughs> yeah. until such time so that becomes a real burden if you're doing it on site no problem because you're there but if you're off site if you have to build them, number one, you don't know if you can even find a site to build them. Who knows how long it takes to get it permitted, designed, and everything else. So basically, that shuts down your project till that happens. At least if you can acquire somewhere in town units that become affordable units, that makes it a little less daunting a challenge because you buy one, you've got some time before you need to buy the second one, some time before you buy the third because you're going to build nine more units. So at least that gives you a little breathing room to keep going. Obviously, the cash version is ideally, from the developer's point of view, is the cleanest. But I understand your point of view. It's great to get the cash, but what are you going to do with it? So I think, in perfect world, if you could eliminate the restriction on the age on site. Now, remember now, we're not talking about 180 units that are going to have children. 160, Vin will tell you, he's got basically de facto age restricted in the marketing materials and in the deeds as it is. So you're talking about 18 units. And that's why when I hear other projects, is it possible you could have two or three children? Yeah, it's possible, but there are some safeguards in that. And I know Vin doesn't want to go that route, but I think at least if you lift that restriction, even though no one wants to use it, it's an escape hatch, worst case scenario, if the other things don't pass the town meeting. Because if the other things don't pass the town meeting, wherever they are, and you left that in place, the project's in limbo. There's no place to go. So that's my concern. I understand. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Good evening. Um, yep. Um, as we talked about, it's not a question of wanting to remove the restriction. I mean, we've got a permit that requires you, a bylaw required, there's financing, there's, there's seven units that are presently under construction, there's two building <coughs> permits are underway. Um, there's people who have bought in on the concept that there aren't going to be kids there because there's a restriction 18. So <laughs> it, it's not that we don't want it. We can't. I mean, we're, we're trying to avoid the litigation that involves us and unfortunately would involve the town. And the concept of, of the variety of options in the Lou thing we think is, is the way to go. Uh, the first comment in that regard is that the way your amendment is written now, 
we would pay for the for the price of or the sales price of an affordable three bedroom. Uh, and I understand that that's language that came out of another section of your bylaw in regards to flexible developments. But flexible developments aren't limited to two bedrooms. I mean, Sometimes we they have are. a restriction in. They are. Huh? They are at times. They are. Yeah. Well, it, okay. I, I didn't. I didn't realize that. But I don't think it's appropriate to say pay a three bedroom when we can only build a two and therefore sell a two. So that's our first instance. If we think if you're going to do the payment in lieu and the nature of a price, it, it can't be more than what we're allowed to build. Um, we had a, a, a meeting uh, with the chair, and we talked about some numbers, and we went back and looked at some things. So we've got some different numbers, but we proposed two different scenarios. One where you would, would simply take, and all the affordables are basically as part of a three at the tripex buildings. Uh, so if, if you take the, the affordable out and you build it offside, that building kind of becomes two simplex units. So all this would necessitate amendment of the site plan, but basically you're just removing that, a build one of the, the three units in a three, making them two, separating by the thing, they become centric, so it, it requires an amendment of your, of your decision. So we'll talk about one, just taking the affordable out, making the payment, and, and then they become simplex in place. And then the other, one, the other scenario in, in the hope would be that you'd leave all these options open. Uh, the couple that Roy suggests from the point of even building off site or whatever. Uh, but then also converting, paying a higher price if we convert the affordable into a market. Because if we just take the affordable out and have to give you a payment, we're not getting anything from that. You know, we're, we're right now, and we provided numbers where basically the cost of the construction and the sales price, and the state has confirmed a two hundred eight thousand five hundred dollars sales price for a two bedroom. It's basically costing us roughly two hundred thousand bucks to build that. So there's a roughly a ten nine ten thousand dollar return on that. So we can't simply say we'll take it out. We'll give you two hundred because then you don't have any income coming off to set that two hundred. So. Uh, the scenario you want to look at is one a price for removal of that putting it off site Then we'll give some updated numbers than what we had at, at the meeting uh, And then a higher scenario if we can replace the affordable with a market you get more money that you can take off site someplace Okay, you understand the two concepts The major thing I got out of that is that It's better for you to build the affordable housing because then you get some money and oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and easier. Yeah. So there's a lot of words to get there. No offense. Huh? Um, yeah, can I care. just make yeah. a, a, a comment here? I mean, I, I think it, this is a complicated one for us. This is going to get yeah. really complicated at town meeting, mm -hmm. and I think just explaining things in 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 words and whatnot is going to be really hard pressed at, at town meeting. So. Um, I, I understand what you're saying, but this is just my opinion. If, if you want to convince town meeting of something, it's probably going to take more than just you speaking. I mean, it, it's, oh, we it's, have numbers. We show yeah. the scenario. But you haven't even shown those to us. Uh, maybe you have to Muriel. No, I haven't yeah. seen them. Yeah. No, that's. that's um, and, and I just I, I think like like I'm hard pressed to make even a, a recommendation of some some kind just based on people hypothesizing or kind of stating in general sense is what those numbers are. Like, like for me, I think this is complicated, it's messy. Um, the decision is not with us, the decision is with town, uh, with, at town meeting, and, and I think that, that <coughs> just, just my recommendation, but, but I'd, I'd put a lot more effort into preparation for that than, than what I've seen so far, because it's, it's hard for me to, to have a firm opinion based mm -hmm. on what, what you guys have shared with us today. I, I like going back to your comment, if there's enough leeway in what's out there, then these still are affordable, but they're not counted towards the inventory. So if you have enough surplus, that may be the ultimate way to go. So Maybe. let me, in the interest of time, um, let me ask the board this. Do you have um, narrower constraints that you are comfortable with, right? We did vote to take off the, un, the lower age, no, to leave in place the lower age restriction. We don't know if we can have that back. Um, but can people, you know, sort of narrow their focus of where we want to target our answer? 
if it, and if it is that you want to maintain the under um, or maintain the under 18 or get rid of the oh good god I'm mighty, get rid of the under 18 um, definitely put it out there and we'll see if it's possible so Carol what's your I would like to see that come back and my other comment I think I heard you say that according to the calculation of what the payment in lieu of you feel is too high I I personally am not interested in negotiating a lower payment in lieu of. I don't think the payment in lieu of is adequate to provide a separate house on a separate property to fulfill the requirement. So I am not in favor of changing that and I don't think we're in a position to say, okay, that's too much. All right. Can I just make one comment about the last meeting? This is a moving target and I thought we left two weeks ago having maintained that restriction and that's kind of the way we I did would, right we did I accept that criticism on behalf of yeah, the board. no I, I understand <laughs> believe me I've gone back and forth myself on on this and what's yeah. best and we're but not do, we're not doing it to make it harder right this is right. a complicated thing but right. yeah but I do have all my buyers have that in their master deed yep. right now yep. And that language that mirrors what was passed, I think, in 2015 at town yep. meeting, that is in their master deed. And in many cases, that's, uh, I think, not to speak for them, but I think I have spoken to every one of my buyers, and many of them have a buying into this community for that very reason. Certainly, it's not the only reason, but it's a... It's a lifestyle, and it's not an anti-children thing like you mentioned, because everybody, almost I everybody I know, has had children, and right. they have grandchildren, and that's all part of wanting to stay in this community and being close to family, but not have children immediately in the community. And, um, uh, you know, that, that's a very real situation it's it's not easy to get sales when you don't have so finished I mean, units built I, I think we all we all appreciate we heard you when you said it and I'm not trying to cut you yeah. off but I'm just at the time and we are not dismissing that at least, at least I, I'm sure we're not um, we understand that we also understand that that it isn't necessarily legally tenable and we have to solve that right mm -hmm. so we, we, we understand what you really want and we're trying to work with a solution that satisfies everybody as best as possible. I'm sure. Hold on one second. Frank. Um, I just put my hand up. Do you have a, do you have a preferred solution oh. or constraints narrowing down, narrowing down the target? Um, I'm just going back to what Carol wrote, her preference mm -hmm. and her statements on that. And if there's any way we can make that fit. So Carol's preference after the discussion is to remove the under 18 mm. and she is not interested in negotiating down the compensatory cost right. the pilot is the pilot anyways from the formula um, right so is that what you're saying you agree we, with we, yes and yes and no because the whole thing is it's a deeper issue than that but my media preference is that yes whatever. okay perfect yes sorry that's okay i just want to clarify yes carol your position is that we remove the under 18 remove the under 18 restriction and keep the affordable component in Got the it. element. Yes, okay. My other statement which was unrelated is in response to the comment that they feel that the payment in lieu of is too high by the calculation. Yes. So that's just yes. which would okay. factor I had in a, a question for the developer. I'm just curious since we started these discussions, how many additional contracts have you signed? Uh, <clears throat> I don't have the exact number, but I would say uh, probably three or four. Okay. I think this started at the end of January, so I would say that's about the number. I'd rather not disclose the number of sales we have to date it's fair. altogether. Um, and actually, if, if I could, maybe to address your point about not having any real information from us at that meeting. Can I just- You can pass those out for sure, but we're, I'm gonna keep going around the table. 
Deb. Um, I, I think the only way to go to let everybody in the town know exactly what the situation is and to give everybody an A or a B to include lang both languages in is important. And feedback from the and, and, and feedback from each side so that when it's presented, it's presented in a way that people can understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's complex. It's, 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 it's okay. Job. How about you, Dave? I'm a techie guy, so I don't talk. I don't beat around the bush. Remove, yeah. re remove the restriction for under 18. Remove the restriction for under 18, and keep the affordable in there. Carol's idea. My preference is to leave the restriction for under 18, and allow them to. Allow them to purchase um, units off-site and, re and resell them as affordable, rather than having to construct new ones. Can I, can I clarify, because I'm not sure I yeah. fully understood this before. They were allowed to build 180 units in Legacy Farms, but because 18 were supposed to be affordable, now he can only build 162 if, yeah. we, if we take the affordable out, which is the problem, because it's not as profitable. If you can't yeah. build one. Yeah, and I think that there's a negotiation point in there that they are going to want to build a few of them not as affordable. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a, that's a moving piece, or potentially moving piece. Right. Uh, so I have a, first a question uh, for the developer, and then, I, then I'll give you my perspective. Mr. Barbera, you mentioned that if you get rid of the under-18 restriction, that's illegal. Is that correct? The, the restriction? Yeah, for that. Well, it, it, it's illegal in the sense that it makes your bylaw illegal, in, in the sense that the DCA right, will not that accept that counting towards your inventory. So it's not illegal. It's contrary right. to a policy of DACD. So you can't, they you can't have not, a form. It will not count them. Mm -hmm. so I understand that. It, it makes your bylaw impossible to perform. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't well, comply with the bylaw. Correct. Yeah. No matter. If we don't do anything, we can't comply with the bylaw. We're not complying now with the bylaw. Mm -hmm. So if we take out the 18, then we do comply with the bylaw. Right, but this project is not subject to an amendment of the bylaw, which means we're in litigation over the not, validity of the bylaw. Not yet, we're not. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, let's, can we go around the table but hold it? <laughs> the article takes care of that, that you would be subject to the change. I see. Okay. I just wanted to hear what Elaine had yep. said. No, I'm glad because I didn't, wasn't seeing out of this, this piece of my head. I mean, Carol's camp. Um, I think I'm in Carol's camp, <laughs> but I'd like to understand what the estimates are. And again, I also think that um, given the level of sensitivity to school populations, I think you have a really, really tough time selling this to town meeting. We, by the way, we are in this together. Just no, to I mean, we, we're, we're not going to have an article to town meeting what we're doing. And, and I understand you from the viewpoint of a recommendation to, to town meeting or something that's very simple has absolutely a higher chance of success yep. than anything else. Understand, I understand, fair so. point. But again, I, I, maybe I'm just sharing too much of my opinions here. But I wouldn't, like, I, I, I'd be cautious about going in and trying to negotiate a lower um, payment in lieu of when there's already a lot of sensitivity <laughs> here. And that's just my opinion. But uh, again, I, I, I worry a lot about how town meeting is going to respond to this concept. And I, I think that it's a, it's a tough road ahead. So I just, yeah, leave it at that. I totally agree that it's a tough road at town meeting. I, I personally, and you know, uh, thank you, Carol, for laying this out because it's such a confusing issue. Um, I, I would agree to retain the affordability, but I don't think that would pass at town meeting because I think that the reaction is going to be we have to retain <coughs> well, no, no one under 18. Um, and that's, so I think that's different than what you think is gonna happen at town meeting, but you know, that's interesting. 
So can, is it fair to say you're in Deb's camp that we hold on to both so far? You don't, you haven't framed it down? So what we're presenting to town meeting? Or you know what the articles will. will so we don't know if it's possible to do the to to reinstate to to take off the age restriction. We don't know if that this is even possible. Yeah. Right. So right now we're talking. Uh, if you had a preference on either side, are you are you on the both camp, keeping both in play, or do you have a preference to maintaining the affordability straight up and removing the under 18 restriction? or leaving the under 18 restriction and uh, mandating the off-site affordability using some mechanism, either a cash payment or providing the units? My sense is that if there's two options and it's clearly that, you know, town meeting can vote for one or the other, but not both, you know, like if they pass one, the other one is no longer an issue. I mean, how does it happen? I mean, yeah, I mean, town meeting could, I mean, the board could make that motion, but. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think it's going to be enormously confusing at town meeting if we have two options. I think there needs to be one option. Okay. And do you have one that you favor? My favor, favored way to, to go forward would be Carol's suggestion. All right. I'm, uh, I favor the. What the one that was outlined by Amy, which is leaving the restriction and purchasing in the units off site as affordable. But I think it's clear that we at least need to investigate if we can put that this option back on the warrant and then have this conversation. Oh, I did uh, want to again. mention that that's the option that Zach recommended mm -hmm. the, orig the original one, the removing the age restriction. Yeah. Yeah. And I also wanted to mention that the, the number of affordable units is one for every 10. So if the size of the development is reduced, then there's fewer affordable units that have to be provided. Yes. Yes. And so if we're, no one else is going with both, then I would like to re-vote. What would your vote be then? My, my vote would be for the affordable in the development to okay. remove the number, the 18 restriction, but keep the affordable. Okay. Um, so I just, um, we have a challenge. We have a real challenge. Um, so we're going to get the information about whether or not it can go back, right? And then we don't meet again until we will necessarily meet before town meeting because we do not yet know. Well, we meet one more time. We but not the town, town meeting. meeting. We do have room reserved for us. Town meeting starts at seven, so I I would suggest that everybody be prepared to meet at about six before that night. I do because yeah. we're seriously kind of wrestling with this whole thing. We sure are. And I think we need to go have a, co a, a coherent summation of the issue and be able to articulate it in a way that's very. I want to say easily digestible, or at least easily understood to entertain discussion at town meeting. I agree. Otherwise, it's just going to be a, a, a thrash. That's a nice way to put it. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, really. You know, okay. Is, so it is April 22nd. Um, town meeting is May 6th. Uh, what, is, what is April 29th? Is that Zach again? April 29th. Uh, it's know your no. vote. Right. Oh, I, I cannot. No, we, I, or your one of us has to be there too. Yeah. April 29th is know your vote. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Thank you. I got to get that on there. May 1st is a Zach meeting. Okay. Uh, May 1st. I can't do the 30th. But if you want to, if you want to take it. Way to pass the buck. How strong do you feel about April 30th? <laughs> All right, what about May 2nd? I could do it. I can do it. I can do that. I can do it. Can do it. All right. And is 7 o'clock the earliest anybody can meet? I can go earlier. Yeah. Dancer said I will dress her rehearsal that afternoon, so I can't. Well, so what time can you get here? I'm sorry. So I wouldn't, can't, I can't do early. Yeah, no, I understand. Don't apologize. Yeah. What time can you? Well, I don't know yet. 
I, d I don't you always know how long that's going to take. It starts at 3.15. She's got to be in 40 uh, ounces. I, listen, <laughs> I have been in those shoes. Yeah. Um, so it seems like it would be done by 7, but, but I can't. Well, so is it safer to do 8? Or 7.30. 7.30? Let's yeah. do 7.30. Don't apologize. Everybody's got a life, and you're lucky to have a little one still dancing. I know. I'm going to New York City to see my little one dancing. She's 27, so. Nice. Um, okay. So Thursday, May second. Do we have? Uh, do you, can you look at the rooms? This room is not available, but this we can use the lower level. Basement. Basement. Okay. All right. So Thursday, May second, at seven thirty p.m. in the basement for this discussion. Yes, Mr. McDowell. Um, can you look at confusing the nature of this? Because if, if we're having Mm -hmm. I think they're going to so love this. When, when I would request that you allow us to put together a very succinct PowerPoint presentation, so we'd be happy to share with the board for approval prior to town meeting. I think this is going to be very, very clear that people want to understand. Otherwise, people are going to glaze over and who knows where it goes. So, what I would also hope, and maybe clarify for me, if you in fact do choose to lift the age restriction, and for whatever reason, Ben doesn't want to go in that direction. I'm hoping he still has the option to do something and acquire units off site. Is that currently the way the law is written? I say that again. In other words, if you pass lifting the timing, if you pass lifting the age restriction, yeah. which means he can build a floor along site, but if he chooses not to, does he still have the option to reduce potentially the size of the project or leave it depending and buy or acquire? units off site for the purposes of affording So I, that will be the subject of the conversation on May 2nd. Okay. okay. Great. We, look, we're all invested in finding something that works. Um, and the numbers are getting together. Can we get copies of that so we can see? Because maybe it's some mix of all that. I say, ask your question again. I'm sorry. On, on the, the, the numbers that you're looking at from for the affordable you rank on the, on, the, on the 10 percent. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Can we absolutely. have that for the May second? Sure. Meeting? Yeah, absolutely. No. Yeah, we want we want everything on the table. Let's push it around and listen. Somebody gets a free drink at Fran's going away. <laughs> they come up with a solution that works. Free? Who's paying for it? Yeah. <laughs> me. Because <laughs> it's not going to be me. All right. May 2nd, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Can I suggest maybe if Ray could attend the May 2nd meeting, not to run up expenses, but uh, if you could have his direct feedback on. Something. I will contemplate that for Unless sure. Unless we have it in advance. Yeah, so yeah. I'll contemplate that for sure. Ray, I want your back in the back. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. All right. Um, okay. I have a suggestion. Yep. So for May 2nd, if there's time, could we have a draft PowerPoint of all the zoning articles we're going to present at town meeting so that we could give feedback? Or just maybe before the meeting? Do you want a PowerPoint? I guess that with respect to the town meeting presentation, do you want a PowerPoint for every article or just certain articles? Um, so, do you think it's helpful to the it's, public it's, to it's, have this? I, I agree. It I is. Yeah. I think so too. And even this one, sure. this particular article, it's going to need multiple slides. <laughs> well, not just the words, but if we could somehow do a visual diagram of what the proposal is all about, and maybe you have pictures of a Venn diagram. Well, anything, right? Um, or even just say, like, hey, like here's that. the units. Here's an affordable unit, right? If you buy, if you uh, payment yeah. in lieu, and this is how it would move, and just so you can kind of like have a story. Because without a story, you're just kind of resisting, you're just spilling facts. And people are going to be like, at this point, anyway, they're going to be like this. They're going to be One placed. of the things that I think is really like mm -hmm. blowing everybody away is that trying to replace these affordable units and having money in lieu doesn't mean anything to anybody because there's no concrete site. There's no concrete anything. It's just a pile of money. And so we're not doing <coughs> what we were set to do. Mm -hmm. We're over time. Okay. Um, okay. I definitely think that... Um, that we should have the PowerPoint. I'm not sure, to be honest with you, that I can commit to being prepared for the second, but um, I will sure try. Is it, well, I guess if we could, if we could look at a draft of the warrant, so we could just kind of go through it and see. The packet, the zoning articles. So just what was in today's? Mm -hmm. Muriel. These numbers are fine. These article numbers are final. Unless one is added, and oh. one <laughs> can be numbered. 
Muriel, okay. just a section, just a suggestion is you could delegate. We will know by tomorrow. Delegate the PowerPoint. Yep. Stop. I I can't even process quite yet. Okay. Thank you though. I got. I I, I know that's a, I know that's an option. Um. So, uh, David, we have ignored your 495 I-90 interchange again. Another two or four weeks won't matter. Okay. I appreciate that. But I just, a lot. if we could have it some say in their design, we don't want to wait too long. That's, that's no, all. I totally agree. Yeah. I, and and uh, maybe we could meet offline and just sure. talk about it a little bit and see what we bring forward. Because I feel, I feel really badly that we haven't gotten to it Sorry. tonight. Also, I know there's, it's very hard before our town meeting, so let's get all that stuff done first. I appreciate that. Okay. Madam Chair, uh, I have a request either for the 13th, and I guess it's depending on some of Fran's feedback on this, uh, and Elaine's, uh, because Fran and I were the last people standing from the board that had the agreement to have the intersection at Wood Street and West Main Street updated. Uh, if we could have a, I don't know if, if you'd like a, a a refresh of that, like maybe five, ten minute presentation, if we could fit it in on the 13th, or if that would be rather something we should do <coughs> after the election. Um, Is this related to the downtown corridor project? Or? No. It's, uh, it's from like two years ago. So here's my recommendation on that, Frank. Um, make Shoot Elaine and John and myself an email, and we will look at when it can go on to a meeting. But John. detail out. John. Oh, the new guy. Thanks, hey, John. John, our new principal. I think my mind is John Westerly. He's got a name to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we will, uh, but but frame frame your concerns and and the time frame and the information, and we will talk about it. The reason I was bringing it up now is I was, I was wondering if Fran wanted to participate. If you want, if you're going to participate, Frank, I'd love to participate. Okay. I, I I'm trying to think of public comment. What we're talking about. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Ken was chair. Is this is this is dates back to that, back to Uncle and Mr. Mastriani's development, Hopkinton <laughs> use, added traffic to the intersection. Oh, I, I got gotcha. you. Oh, I was in the wrong street. place. Ah, Lumber Street. No, I'm, not Lumber, I'm you sorry. Said Wood street. You said Wood oh, Street. I'm, I'm tired. Like yeah. street. I'm tired. Lumber ah, Street. Lumber, and Lumber, okay. Oh, Lumber. Yeah. Okay. Cliff sold his house. Yes, right. <laughs> um. <laughs> Do you want a motion to I do. I, I will entertain. Oh. Can I ask one more question? You can ask one more question. This is really hopefully a short one, but I'm curious if people have any opposition to moving our standard start time forward to seven o'clock instead of seven thirty. I have no problem with that. And and I know that and, and, and part of it for two reasons. Number one, because I think that we all sort of lose focus the later it gets. Yep. And secondly, for our professional staff. Yep. Um, it's also yes. particularly hard on them. So I don't. I'm open to seven. But well, we're probably not going to get out any earlier. I, okay. I'm not open to seven. But Gary, you work in town, right? Are you travel? Are you? I travel. Are you I, I work in, in Boston. Marlboro. Yeah. Fran has a six a.m. flight. I just, I mean, selectmen. I, I realize selectmen meet at six thirty on Tuesdays. Um, I'm not saying we. I think that we maybe we take it up with our new board. How about that? Fair enough. That's okay. Sounds good. Thank uh, you. Can I just say something? Quickly. Um, I've been looking for, I have a. Uh, you have to come up. You have to. You have to come up. People can't hear you yet. And you have to introduce yourself. It's open public meeting law, Mrs. LaFanier. So I was looking around for one floor apartment, and I went to a bunch, and I went to the ones with Legacy, and I couldn't move in there because they don't have elevators. So there's no handicap on second or third floors. And there's no designated handicap on the first floor, but they're calling first floor units handicap. But you'd have to wait for one to come up because they're all gone. And how many handicapped people are there, I don't know. So when I was thinking tonight, we were talking about that uh, development with the under, and there's, a, there's another one in town too that has one handicap unit on the bottom floor and they would have to move out for somebody to move in. And I'm not, I don't consider myself handicapped. Don't read that way. There are people that need it a lot more than I do. But uh, it's the Lyme disease thing, and it's not going to get better. It's just going to get worse over the end. So 
I decided to, to look around and I came up against this and then I'm looking at this and they do have an elevator in the basement and I'm, I'm all for basement parking. I think that's a smart idea to put underground parking. But I'm hoping they have elevators to the second and third floor because there will be no handicapped bathrooms at all in that entire building if they don't. Okay. Because there's no, there's no first floor apartments. Yeah. I agree. And, and there's a, you know, this is the third. I think they'll have to then. units in town that don't have elevators. But, but so the parking in the garage is for the residents, and so the elevator yes. was intended for that. I would assume that they would. I'm hoping it's intended. We can ask. Yeah. We can ask. Yeah. We can ask. But that's it's a good thing. Not just to good ask. Retail, yeah, but that's a good yeah. thing to make sure. It's just, just, just a thought because yep. I've been to three units and none of them are really handicap accessible. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Cool. Good point. One of the buildings that can use uh, the four-story building does have elevators. Does it? Oh, that's good. Okay. John, did, did you have something you wanted to say before that I was ignoring? Um, yes. The one, oh, I don't Sorry. know if you knew about it, but we did. Yeah, we wanted to address the Whisper Way application for next uh, hearing. Mm -hmm. So right now it's not being advertised, but it is a modification to the special permit. It may be a minor modification, so we were, we're not sure if it needs to be advertised, but we wanted the board's opinion as to whether you feel like we should just out of an abundance of caution, advertise it uh, so that there's no issues moving forward. Okay. For the new layout you're talking? Yes. Oh, I, I think. Yeah, I don't think that's I minor. Yeah, I, I would that. make yeah, it public. I do too. Yeah. That's, that's a huge change. Don't let it out. Yeah. Yep. We don't have too much a butter interest. It's a little bit of a, but I still think that um, it's safer to advertise it probably. We'll advertise. Deadline's tomorrow, which is why we wanted to ask. Thank you. I hate to not advertise it, and then someone has oh. to no, that was, that was no, our concern no. based on yeah. that. And that thing's yeah. changed yeah. more times than... Sounds like we're all saying the same thing. Exactly. Advertise. Usually, we always publish in Thursday. We're still planning time. Plenty of time? Okay. Thank you. People are used to looking for planning for what ads on Thursday. If they're used to looking for the ads, yeah, they'll find Can okay. I move to adjourn? Sorry, second. before a second. Oh, no, no, just, just to answer your question, not. looking at the floor plans, the elevator does go up to the residential unit. Thanks. Oh, yeah, perfect. Thanks, Thank John. you, John. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you, guys. Hello.